13. All right. Oh. So <laughs> I'll, I'll kick things off with my number three, unless we're going to do a whole new recording. Just go ahead and do the number three. No, yeah. No, let's do it. Let's Wait, do you're it. You're crazy. What just happened to all the gold we just had, Maggie? Oh, okay. It's uh, oh, it's just condensed. Yeah, I condensed. Because that way I can see when it's up to uh, 45 oh, okay. minutes. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, this is why I'm not the editor. I just condensed. I, I don't I fuck with it, it anymore. I, it. I don't, don't mess worry. with it anymore. All right. 2013. 2013. 2013. So 2013. my... <laughs> this is so stupid. My number three movie <laughs> is movie 43. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. What I know, I know it was a weak year. Uh, but oh, It was a weak shit. year, but... This movie cracks me up. Like really? it is funny. Yes, the cast is just. It's inc- it's underrated funny. Yes, nah. the it is funny. The nah. cast is is kind of incredible. Like the the, the fact that they got Holy some of these people fucking Barry. to like be in this movie funny. and do some of these things is mm-hmm. is just unreal. And I die laughing through the entire movie. Really? It's yes. a rated R shocked. SNL sketch after sketch. Basically, hard R like. But there's funny. some real surprise moments that you just you don't see them coming, and then you're like, oh my god, what the fuck? Yeah. Damn it! Now I have to watch this movie too because I'm uh, very curious because I heard that everyone had told me that there was a negative hype that this was oh, the worst so fucking movie. There's a ever Johnny seen. Knoxville, Sean William Scott bit with Gerard Butler as an evil leprechaun, and if <laughs> that doesn't sell, you, <laughs> yeah, so if that doesn't sell you on it. Yeah, uh, like the the first. Um, kind of scene it's it's like little vignettes all that all take place in the same m- movie universe. universe yeah and the uh, the first one is um hugh jackman and kate winslet sitting at a table date. kate yes. winslet's in this freaking yes, I'm movie telling you, everybody's yeah. in this movie and they're sitting there and you know it's a blind date they're they're just kind of start talking to each other and all of a sudden you know he goes oh it's warm in here and he takes a scarf off and he has balls on his neck testicles oh, I, yes testicles I yes. That. yes like a- actual testicles who's the guy yes. what Kate Hugh Jackman him? Hugh Jackman yes oh my god that is Miguel's guy crush and yes. he is he's crazy it is oh, we get so to talk to him. fucking funny <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> we get to him it here. comes out of left field and you're like what the hell oh, yeah. am i watching yep. and the whole movie is like that and there's this also, just like all good anthology movies, there's good. this uh, tie it all together subplot yeah. going on. And it's these kids, uh, two brothers and a friend, who are hanging out. And uh, they've concocted this elaborate, mm-hmm. like, sort of revenge plot against the younger brother, who happens to be a really nerdy hacker type. And um, all of this leads up to them, like, searching out this movie called Movie 43, which yeah. is this, like, uh, very controversial dark web movie that is supposed to not exist. So of course these these teenage kids are all on the internet searching for it, and that's basically the launching pad for all these little vignettes and these oh, segments yeah. is that well, they stumble into. There's also into the storyline of the screenwriter that's um uh who oh, I can't think of his name. That? Um, because oh, rem- I'm trying to put it all together. It is a underrated uh, it's, movie. It's kind of all over the place, but it's just. So I just funny. literally googled because you said it. Uh, Hugh Jackman balls. Oh yeah, there and you the go. First thing I see. <laughs> well, is him at the table with a fucking pair of sacks. <laughs> Thank God that's the first thing you saw, and you yeah. didn't actually get like. A I didn't get like no. I didn't get a Hugh John Jackman's oh, balls. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a John Ham <laughs> leak Kinnear. or anything like that. That's what you mean. Greg Kinnear plays the. Uh, Greg Kinnear. Why do I not remember that? He's a that washed bit? up producer. Why do I not remember that bit? Yeah. There's a ton of actors in this movie. There is. Um, I mean, it's just a, a who's who well, of I saw, Hollywood. I saw the trailer, honestly. and it looked like a who's who in the trailer. But then, I like right after it came out, people were like, what the fuck is it we watched? People were like it's angry mad at this movie. It's such a random movie. Yeah. But it's just funny Now I have to watch it, because it has my homeboy Hugh Jackman with fucking nuts hanging over his chin. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Th- the evil leprechaun bit is pretty good, too. Jar Butler as a leprechaun just sounds awesome. Yeah, and there's, is it, on, yeah, Anna Ferris's bit is really funny. Oh yeah, with Chris Pratt. <laughs> yes, you guys, Chris Pratt. You yes. keep going. Is everybody in the Don't mothers? Don't spoil that. One. I'm not gonna spoil it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna watch it this weekend. Uh, oh no. Oh. Sound. Sorry about that. Okay, better. <laughs> yeah, we're. No, 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 oh shit. There okay. goes 2013. It's no. that sums up 2013 for you. Talk about if we're, we're kicking it off with movie 43. Okay. okay. No, I still don't got you. You still don't got me? No, I, uh, Mike's dead. Where's your. I got it. No, I hear him loud. Oh, where's Sasha? Oh, he's unplugged. That's why. Oh, okay. that's why. Holy shit. So sorry. So there we go. Yeah. Okay, that was. That yeah, was movie my, 43 my really kicks choice. things the su- off. The surprise, yeah. Thank you for kicking us that off with a movie surprise. I never would have guessed on anybody's <laughs> fucking <laughs> you list. Bet. 
Yeah, my number three uh, also stars Hugh Jackman, but uh, a little more serious. Doesn't have balls on his chin or Damn anything it. like that. Uh, this is Denny Villeneuve's American breakout film. I want to say it's called Prisoners with Jake Ooh, Gyllenhaal, yeah. uh, Hugh nice. Jackman, Terrence Howard, uh, Paul Dano, uh, some other supporting actors that I can't round off the top of my head right now. But man, this movie Solid. is intense as fuck. And uh, there's a lot of symbology going on. This is my type of movie because there it forces you to rewatch over and over to catch all the stuff you didn't get the first go around. But the plot of this movie is some dark, dark stuff. Um, this is a story of two fathers, Terrence Howard and uh, Hugh Jackman, who are different types of people. And they uh, have two daughters in the same age group. And the two daughters, the opening 30 minutes of the movie is uh, just sort of a family relationship. And this is what's going on uh, in their family lives. But it doesn't look like it's moving. It's okay. Uh, you can edit all this out. It is condensed. We got to get it all over anyway. Sorry. It's okay. He's so happy. He's so happy. Well, give him a treat, fool. That's why he's so happy because he gets a treat afterwards. I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's okay. So I'm gonna pick off, pick up from your mom. (laughs) (laughs) Have you have you seen Prisoners? No. Okay. It's a good movie. Yeah. It's a solid movie. Uh, It's long though. It's really long. All right. So yeah. um, The greatness of Paul Dano. Yeah, right. So Prisoners is a two and a half hour movie. I really love two and a half hour movies. Uh, they they wow. seem yeah. th- there's something about two and a half hour movies. But anyways, uh, condensed version of what this is all about. It's a dark subject. It is about kidnapping, child kidnapping specifically. Uh, Terrence Howard and Hugh Jackman play two dads who lose their daughters very early on in the film, and then it becomes. Uh, a very harrowing look at what realistically takes place from the family's perspective and the extent to which uh, a father will go to get uh, his daughter back. But then in comes Jake Gyllenhaal's character, who this is one of my favorite Jake Gyllenhaal performances of all time. Um, and we speak on him a little later on in the decade with Nightcrawler. I'm sure somebody's going to mention that. Uh, but uh, this performance stands the hell out for me. He plays a detective uh, on this case who... And it's interesting because the year before he played End of Watch, so now I'm just piecing together why he's so good in this role because he had like two years of cop mentality. And he is such a good detective in this movie. He starts off as the guy who has to go by the book and has to remove all emotion from this. But as the case develops and as he gets closer to what is going on and this case unravels, he becomes basically a more controlled version of Hugh Jackman. Uh, Hugh Jackman goes all out in this movie. I don't know why he didn't get nominated for it because there are scenes in this movie where Hugh Jackman just takes it up to the a level of intensity that I've I've not seen him go um, ever. And granted, that story and the plot provides and contributes to that. This guy has lost his daughter, who was his entire world, and this is the revenge that he wants to take out on anybody involved. And, and Paul Dano is on the receiving end of, of a lot of that because Paul Dano plays a somewhat mentally handicapped uh, younger individual who is the number one suspect in these kidnappings and the world knows he's the number one suspect and the dad knows he's the number one suspect and the law enforcement isn't doing anything about it because they just don't have enough evidence on him so there's this weird dynamic throughout the whole movie where Hugh Jackman uh, is encouraging Jake Gyllenhaal to do the most he can and that he's not doing enough and Hugh Jackman crosses that line of, like, uh, you're not going to do anything about it. I'm going to do something about it. And when that happens, this movie kicks it into full, full, all out assault mode. And it becomes very visceral and very intense to watch. It's one of those movies where there's rising action, but it's it's 
it's more concentrated in dialogue between characters, but you look forward to the little bits of dialogue because the acting in here is is just unbelievable, top notch, uh, and I just don't understand why this movie was ignored completely by the Academy on what's a pretty weak year in my opinion. Um, but it was ignored. I think uh, Twelve Years a Slave was nominated and won for this Swept. year. And swept everything, and there yeah. were some other, uh, I mean, yeah, there's some shit like Nebraska that came out this year that got <laughs> so much hype, and I'm like, give me a fucking break. Sorry if that's on anybody's list. Nebraska's up. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> 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 but uh, Prisoners is just a hell of a movie that I could talk about it for an hour. I won't do it, but there's a lot of stuff, uh, the, symbol- uh, the symbols of mazes that's intertwined in this movie and how the title itself, everybody is a prisoner to their own device in this movie. Yeah. Hugh Jackman plays uh, a Christian father who's uh, very Christian-based in his, uh, in his demeanor and going about things, and he has to lose himself and lose all of, of the control that that particular faith has bred into him. And then you've got Jake Gyllenhaal, and there's he's got a eight star uh, symbol on his neck. Uh, he's got a Masonic ring uh, on. There's a lot of uh, hidden Easter eggs in this movie, and and that plays into why I like it so much because it's like a scavenger hunt for little clues as to what Denny Villeneuve was trying to do, who happens to be uh, next to Christopher Nolan, I think, uh, one of my favorite directors of this decade. And uh, I just look forward to everything he does. And it helps that he's from uh, Quebec and Montreal. And, uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, I've got that, that, home, that Homer mentality when it comes to directors and producers, not necessarily movies, but if the movies are good and uh, supported in, in their enthusiasm, then I'm all for it, and I'm going to stand the hell out of the guy, uh, especially if he's from my hometown. But, yeah, number three, Prisoners. Uh, it is a tough movie to watch, and if you're into tough movies to watch and serious subject material, a uh, very adult movie and very, very well executed. It's rough. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh... My number three uh, is uh, 47 Ronin. I liked that one. Oh, um, yeah. Didn't see this one coming. Really? Uh, from an action standpoint, it's a really fun movie, really good movie. Um, you know, this is one of those things that I like. It's loosely based on something that happened in real life. It, granted, they, they're taking a lot of um, liberty here with the story. But, I mean, it's, it's feudal Japan. It's swords. It's sorcery. Uh, you, these guys... Uh, are seeking revenge. It's everything that you want in a good action movie, in my opinion. Is this one with Keanu Reeves? Yes. This Keanu yeah. Reeves is the half this breed. Is actually, Keanu Reeves being that stereotypical Keanu Reeves, which is why I didn't like 47 Ronin all too much. But um, the well, storyline's cool. Yeah, storyline's great. And the great. setting's great. But Keanu Reeves doesn't do anything to stand out <coughs> in this movie at all. I, I would disagree a little bit. Okay. I, I think this this is, you know, before John Wick, uh, this is. Uh, you know, this leading is a build into up to John, John Wick. Yes, mm-hmm. I think so. Sure, yeah. I, I think I if he doesn't get that. this movie, maybe he doesn't get the part in John Wick. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know about that because th- I think the Matrix is what paved the way for John Wick to eventually. I, I don't happen. know. There's a lot of years between the Matrix and John Wick. A lot. Yeah. <coughs> now I gotta I mean, see that too. That's the one. That's, that's the one Keanu Reeves movie. Yeah. Exactly. The Matrix. No. <laughs> God, Forty-seven. Forty-seven Ronin. Uh, yeah, visually it's pretty striking, and uh, the setting's amazing, and the storyline, it's a samurai movie. Uh, it's a remake, I think, of uh, Kurosawa. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know Kurosawa. that it's a direct remake. Seven Samurai. But yeah, it's a different it's, it's take on the same, on the same story. Yeah, ba- yeah. same storyline. Yeah. 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 I'm to watch that now. It's, a, it's an American adaptation of it, yeah, for sure. I, I didn't have it on your radar at all because uh, fun action. Are you yeah. kidding me? Swords, sorcery. Top three? It's on my radar, okay. bro. All right, top three. True. Um, my third overall pick, which I think this is the first time we're mentioning a documentary, um, Ooh, yeah. was a uh, Blackfish. Oh, God. Sad I still haven't yeah. watched that. Remarkably depressing thing is your third. Okay, yeah. listen. I you can't say anything bad. because <laughs> you've never seen it. Um, if you think child I, kidnapping's bad, just watch uh, Blackfish. Blackfish. <laughs> Made it on my list because I always want to go to SeaWorld. SeaWorld, SeaWorld is my jam. I don't like riding rides. I'm big. 
I have a huge fear of heights. Chicken shit. And <laughs> I I will cut you. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I just I I don't know. So Sea World Sea World was always it. Like I can see animals. I can hang you know hang out with them. Whatever, touch them. I don't have to ride no scary ass rides. Uh, not being thrown up in the air, not being like dropped like the f- five stories. Like I'm not into that shit. So SeaWorld's just it's grounded. It's grounded entertainment, mm-hmm. and uh, you get the uh, the amusement park vibes. Yeah, and without going on the log ride because they have those. At sea yeah, yeah. At but the cost of, no, it's of course at, at the cost of enslavement of animals. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. Well, and after Black after Fish watching Blackfish, well, Miguel's never Jeez. been. And his mom lives in San Antonio, and I always she, told him, I was like, we need, we need to go, we need to go, we need to go to Sea World. And then after this movie, I'm like, we're never going again. Mm-hmm. And even right. now, going to like aquariums, just like seeing the it stuff that they wonder. point out in the movie, like the scars that you know the whales would get, um, making them perform, um, just like behavioral stuff, uh, what happens, like where they're kept. Now, whenever. If we do go to an aquarium, I notice those type of things, and it just makes me sad. And just so, grill all the employees, and yeah. No, no, I I won't do that. I'm no, just, it's a serious movie, yeah, and uh, pretty ugly stuff. Yeah, it's oh god, it's incredibly that movie sad. Had, it had an effect, like the Sea World stopped doing a lot of their shit. They said they're not even going to use any more captured animals going forward after that movie came out. Well, they say that. Well, they said that they weren't captured animals to begin with, but that's a lie. Yeah. So. They go back and forth, and they made this something that I didn't like. Is as a kid, I remember watching the. Um, they used to have commercials about SeaWorld, and the biggest commercial that they had was whenever this uh, a baby whale was born, and not even maybe a month later, they separated the mom and the calf, and like the calf went to a completely different park. And it's just like y'all made a big ass deal about this mom and ha- giving birth and at Sea World and and then y'all take the baby away. <laughs> like how can y'all right. do it's, that? It's on its way out. I mean, it's yeah, Sea World is oh, yes. antiquated and yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with. I mean, obviously they that, they gotta release him back to the wild, but uh, the that well, and in, in then Sea World try to say that you know a whale's lifespan is only I think less than twenty five years, and then they found a whale in. Um, they found a whale in in the wild, in the wild yeah. Seen. That was, I think it was like seventy years old, and so it completely because a lot of the, a lot of the things that we know about whales came from studies that they did at Sea World, and mm-hmm. so they only had Sea World to go off of. But now these marine biologists are going into the wild, and they're able to get all these studies that are done with from whales in the wild from like GPS trackers and doing it in a way that's not harmful and not putting them in captivity. And they're just, they're consistently just throwing information out there that directly conflicts with what SeaWorld has come out and said. And it's horrible. That's, yeah. That's the, uh, that's the other half of this movie that I think was so important was not necessarily the subject material, which is paramount, of course, but the uh, the style of that documentary and the disclosure aspect of the documentary really started a sort of uh, it, maybe it didn't start with Blackfish. Maybe it started with stuff like uh, uh, the one where he goes on the McDonald's diet. Uh, uh, Super Size Me. Yeah, Super Size Me. So yeah. Super Size Me, I think, was 2010, 2011. I remember seeing that and I'm like, whoa, I've never seen a documentary that kind of shows me the behind the door. Mm-hmm. That's what documentaries right. yeah. were intended to do all along, but we still didn't see the secret side of like reality and mm-hmm. what was going on behind the well, scenes stuff of corporate that we're America s- and stuff like that. Yeah, stuff that we're around the every Enron. day. Yeah, there was also the Enron documentary. Um, there was this five five-year window of time where it, it felt and it's still ongoing because now it's the trend is to put out a, a revealing documentary and netflix will pick it up and you'll suck it up and everybody will watch it and love it and talk about it the next week right. but before all this wave there was the stuff like blackfish which was rooted in an actual important discussing uh, discussion point and it, it it got that it got to me too and uh it, it's been on the radar ever since like when i go to aquariums when i i've never been to sea world so I, i'll never give them business I don't probably because that really movie that, yeah, yeah. yeah i'll i mean i was a oh, let's go see world i always i yeah we used to go a lot as a kid yeah yeah and then now i just can't i can't imagine going in and even going to, into a zoo 
like it's hard for me like i know a lot of those um well they say a lot of them are like rescues um or they were brought up in captivity so they were, were released into the wild they wouldn't know how to defend themselves or provide for themselves stuff like yeah. that but it going to a zoo just makes me incredibly sad or an aquarium because of blackfish so we we don't go very often the, anymore the zoos and, and aquariums don't bother me quite as much i know a lot of people that are zookeepers or in in that kind of field and and they really for the most part i mean i know there are, there are shitty ones of course but for the most part, they are really putting the animals' yeah. welfare first. Because zoos aren't franchised. Zoos right, are well, yeah. city, uh, city yeah, based. Yeah, and they're mm-hmm. not so much about the entertainment side yeah. of it. It's more yeah. to go and see these animals that that you wouldn't see elsewhere. It's not like right. they're a circus or something where they're putting them out. Sea worlds are spread out. They're the McDonald's uh, right. of of like natural environment animal. They are, attractions. but, but I mean they're, they're not also generally. Zoos, zoos like con- conservation. It's uh, saving species. Yeah, exactly. Whereas SeaWorld, n- it's all no about the show. It's purely yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a circus. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. Well, it just because I feel I know SeaWorld's like an entertainment view, but just it still has an effect that maybe I know I know they're telling us these are captivities and they're um you know watching them and i i don't think that zookeepers don't care for the animals but mm-hmm. it still kind of puts it in that whole that's arena for me oh, yeah. it does and a so little it's bit, just yeah. hard it's just it's just kind of hard to to I go mean, and enjoy it as from, from everything that you know since you're saying i mean everything that i'm reading right now if you just google sea world under news i mean it, it's on its way out i mean yeah. they just lost their their last ceo after hundreds of employees yeah, these were laid take off. time yeah and they lost their biggest investor in history, oh. which was Richard Branson. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, like one of the most yeah, Virgin well, Atlantic. Uh, yeah, he, he was he was the biggest fan of an investor. Him and his wife were like, "Yeah, we're done with you guys." And if you tra- if you, if you trace back the uh, I guess the the market decline of SeaWorld, it's probably directly attached to this movie being released. Absolutely. So this is one of those movies that oh, for sure. that had a point uh, that was not only important to make, but it had a residual effect and. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't see that from documentaries anymore because they kind of become the cliche thing when you want to sort of get a quick hit out there. But some of them are still good and and are talking about candid uh, topics that are worth talking about. But mm-hmm. before this wave of documentaries that you get on Netflix and are so easily accessible, there was stuff like Blackfish that uh, I don't think you can stream right now. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I haven't uh, I haven't it, seen many sites that it used streaming. to be on Netflix for the longest time, but I don't think it's on there anymore. Yeah, um, so like all the Godfathers of documentaries are, are well worth watching, and this is one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's your number three pick? Lighten the mood, Miguel. <laughs> this is exactly what I was saying. Let me lighten the mood. Not so much. Oh, uh, uh, shit. Oh, oh, no. It's The Conjuring. Uh, hey. The Conjuring. Say it's a little bit it of lighten. <laughs> it's, it's a fucking horror yeah, movie. Yeah, I mean, Exorcism's a, a little more fun to talk about than... Uh, <laughs> than, than abused it animals. Actually, it always is. Yeah. It absolutely is. Let's talk about something that's fictional. Uh, What's hopefully. not? Uh, it's not. <laughs> the, it's based on... Uh, right, story. it's based yeah. on the Perone family, which yes. I spent years reading about. Uh, but I'm going to tell myself as a skeptic, it's all bullshit. But it really creeps the shit out of me. Uh, no, really, but it's it's based on the Perone family. I had I, This movie wasn't a perfect horror movie. Um, they changed, uh, at least implicitly, the ethnic background of the family that this is based on, which was a Hispanic family. Um so that part wasn't crazy, but that's really superficial. The movie as a whole is really smart. I remember when it came out, uh, there was a lot of hype around it, and I watched it, and I was not disappointed. I was like, oh, my God. I finally walked out of the theater from a horror movie. Expectations and, met. Yeah, and it does not happen with horror. Agree. It creeped me out. It was it was fun where it needed to be. It was creepy where it needed to be, and I remember going to bed thinking about it. That yeah. doesn't happen with horror, mm-hmm. except every long once in a while. And I wanted to see it again. I'm so mm-hmm. glad I made well, Maggie watch it. Well, yeah. Well, usually, whenever you watch horror, it's like, God, this movie was horrible. There's jump scares and it's very it's superficial it's scares. Yeah, mm-hmm. but and you see those in the trailer too. And and uh, I'll mention the Conjuring yeah. trailer because uh, this is where my expectations were met in that movie as well. Uh, all uh, a lot of the scariest parts of that movie 
are in the trailer. Uh, there's the hand, the infamous hand wow. clap scene. And I had seen yeah. it in the trailer, and I'm like, ah, there's no way that's going to live up to the hype. But that scene lived up to the hype. Yeah, and right. it was a lot more intense than the trailer made it out to seem. And there's uh, other parts in that movie that are, are just solidified and extended uh, versions of what we saw in the trailer. And it just lived up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely did. And there was things in the, that weren't in the trailer, like the, like the dragging of the mom. Yeah, or just the whole exorcism itself uh, wasn't in the trailer. Yeah. And that was intense yeah. as fuck. It's, they were smart yeah, awful. for leaving that out, the third yes. act out. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, that was, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite horror movies of the last decade. It absolutely had to be on my list for 2013. It only has something to do with James Wan directing it. James Wan is brilliant. It. James Wan. Uh, just consistent. James Wan, well, there's Aquaman. Oh yeah, that's uh. Yeah, but you know what? He went to the bank with that fucking movie. So you know, power to you, James Wan. Yeah, right. Scare me, and that was his cash out uh, as far as you know, getting getting. Look at there's just like that was so bad. (laughs) Yeah, that's a rough one. But uh, Dead Silence is uh, epic, and of course, Saw. Saw one. For God, he in, this yeah. is yeah. this is that's his launching pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's his first Insidious. Insidious. Yeah, I like Insidious. I haven't yeah. seen The Conjuring. Oh damn! Wait, is it because of it. the subject yeah. material, or just, I just don't watch horror movies that often? Oh, fair I, I don't Does Jeff? I like horror movies. He loves horror movies. Damn it! Okay, no. he's Heather. Gonna, yeah, I don't cool. watch a lot of scary movies, but okay. Well, okay. Spoiler alert: This was in my honorable mentions. It was almost made Same my here. top three. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So it is so good. It right. is. Good. So it's a, it's a smart paranormal movie. We yes. don't get those often. It's smart yeah. because it's rooted in in uh, it's rooted what a real reality. story. Yeah. yeah, and so y- you have that whole guy. Uh, you're operating under that guise as you're watching it. Like uh, this is real, so I should be scared uh, of what's going on. It puts a different element on when you know it's based on something that happened. and It's based on Ed and, Ed and Ed Lorraine Warren's exactly. books yeah. and their stories. Now don't take that to the bank with every horror movie based on true events. Because no. recently we watched Curse of La Llorona, uh, which is based on well, the I'm Mexican. I'm sorry, you actually saw. Well, uh, the the real story is horrifying, though, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And Growing the movie up. sucked. Uh, the movie sucked. We paused it at like the thirty minute mark, and mm-hmm. uh, part of it was because uh, it, it just it, it seemed like it was gonna recycle a lot of the jump scares, and I'm sure that's what happened. But we didn't watch the end of it. You didn't even finish it. No. Nah. Oh, fuck it, that. It was that bad. It really sucks too because you get a a, a movie that's based on such an, an important Mexican legend that we've heard for yeah. hundreds of years. This mm-hmm. goes back. Such a lore. Such a it's, lore. It's no, poorly executed, everywhere. and then you get Linda Cardellini as the, as the, the yeah the fucking I, the yeah. politics of that decision were interesting. I didn't pay much attention to. No, let's like let's, the let's get a let's get a Mexican story and have the Hispanics be secondary characters. I love Linda Cardellini, man. She's one of my original crushes from Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> Don't be in this fucking movie, dude. Yeah, right. Like God. there there were a lot of options, uh, and yeah, they dropped the the ball on that one. Yeah, I'm just a chicken shit, and I if, if <laughs> no seriously, if we watch a horror movie, I have to watch something afterwards. And it's hard to do that during the week, like to watch two movies or to, to really do something. That's Maggie. We'll get after. like when we go to Redbox. We'll get fucking yeah. like we'll get a the sinister, and then she'll get like a Disney movie afterwards. So. Fuck yeah! Uh, yes, uh. I'm like I need a palate cleanser. I can't go to bed after watching that because I'll That's be the like best time freaking to out. Go to bed. No, man. no. Every yeah. shadow has something in it. I can't do it. That's, I don't like that. Yes. That's how you know you've watched nope. a good horror movie when you I can't sleep sure. at night. I, That's what I. No, I have to go to bed first so that way Miguel has to turn off all the lights <laughs> and I'm like already in bed <laughs> and snuggled and. <laughs> That's that's Can't that's the it. fun thing, man. Is I, I I'm 33 years old now. Mm. If I if I can find a movie that, that keeps you up, that keeps me up, which I used to experience when I was like 12. Yeah. Power to you. We so have good very different uh, definitions of fun. And the lead, <laughs> <laughs> not to go understated, the leads in that movie were pretty good too. Yeah, uh, oh, no, I love everybody in that Patrick movie. Patrick Wilson. Wilson. I love Patrick Wilson. I love Vera Farmiga. The rest yeah. of the cast was amazing. Yeah. There's the, no weak link in that movie. The mom did uh, a great job. Oh, I don't remember phenomenal. her name. Uh, uh, but the one from the... the She's such the, a good actress and I feel bad I can't remember her name either. That's a terrible her face. movie she was in in the late 90s. The Which House on... Or not House on the Haunted Hill. The Haunted. Lily Taylor. Oh. Lily Taylor. She her. was in uh, The Haunting. Yeah. The Haunting with Which Liam Neeson. Isn't that bad? I'll I have to revisit it. it. It is the greatest. I love That's a guilty pleasure movie. It Liam is Liam Neeson, pleasure. Owen Wilson, Catherine yeah. Zeta-Jones. Yeah. And it's the, a good movie. The House but Comes Alive. Yeah. And, it's not yeah. great. That's based on true events. That's Annabelle good. is from The Conjuring Universe, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that yeah. speaks on the strength of The Conjuring, too. It's It spurred multiple franchises, a sequel, which was not nearly as good as the first one. I really wanted to see the 
There's <laughs> one that no. comes out this year, I think. The Nun was uh, a Annabelle Comes Home, I yeah, think. Yeah. Like that. That, that one, Annabelle, the last Annabelle movie we heard did not suck. The the Nun was like a, a yeah. The, it was a sleepover movie for twelve year old girls. Yeah. Who were like. So I could probably watch that. I'd be okay. Oh, <laughs> dude, you're fine. You're fine. It was such a sleepover movie. Multiple franchises from this one. The success of this one movie, and and uh, it, it just goes to show that a lot of people really really like this. And unfortunately, of course, we've got to deal with all the the spinoffs. And some of them are actually pretty good. Um, some of them the not so much. The second Annabelle movie is not that bad. The first one sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, um, good enough. good choice, man. Yeah. So we're moving right. on to yeah. our second choice. All right. So for mine, I'm gonna have to go with Escape Plan. Movie forty three, uh-huh. Escape Plan. Yeah. I see how this year <laughs> is going, and I like it because. 2013 was... It's kind of a random year. Can yeah. you remind me what the hell the escape yeah, plan so is? I don't remember that um, either. Sylvester Stallone is this, <laughs> like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> she says Sylvester Stallone, Maggie's okay. like, ha, ha, ha. Right, so he's, he's this security expert. Mm-hmm. And they're opening a new maximum security prison. Oh. Who's the prisoner? It is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait. That's right. me Arnold. in the ear. What yes. is this? this is the, I miss this? Yes. This is the notoriety of this movie. Yes. Yeah. But it's so good. I love this movie. Legit what? love this movie. So good. Um, Jason Statham. I mean, it's solid. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no, Jason Statham's not on here. There is a sequel there's with bad people in yes, it. Yes, there's two sequels. Oh, oh shit. Jesus. Um, okay, I'll watch Vincent it. D'Onofrio, Jim Caviezel, Sam Neill. I mean, it's just Vinnie Jones. A lot of people in it. But Vinnie Jones? Yes. Um, 50 Cent. You say you's a wankster. Uh-huh. <laughs> but... Never it's popped nothing. I missed this movie. I don't know. So it, it, because it, everybody, <laughs> you know, he ends up in this prison because I've seen it. I know his his whole course, purpose is to you know so evaluate the security of these places, and he ends up there, and then it turns out someone doesn't want him to leave. Ah. You know, so he ends up as a prisoner. Yeah, Holly's in it. And Wait, didn't we see this movie with Stallone in the eighties where he was also stuck in prison? No. You gotta talk on the mic. Oh, sorry. Didn't we see this movie? There was a, there was a fucking movie in the eighties with Stallone. Up. Was it Lock Up? Could be, yeah. Okay. But Not this, at all. Escape plan. What push, pushes <laughs> this movie over for me is there's a scene where they end up in li- these like lock boxes almost, and they're being heated. Whoa. It, it's almost it's like psychological, well, and physical it's torture, saw. I guess. Yeah. But Arnold Schwarzenegger starts acting in Austrian, I guess. And Wait, what? Yeah, well, whatever his native language is. I mean, acting, he starts speaking? Yes. Whoa. And it is the most intense, like, uh, real act acting scene I have ever seen from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Damn. Oh, have you seen like, the movie? That Maggie? Yeah. Well, yep. Love that's Maggie. Good. That's good. But it's just better than Maggie, that scene. Okay. I, I don't know. I love this one little scene. Not like, you. this moment. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just... I don't know. I was really impressed by it, and I I like this movie. So it's because he's he's being tortured, so he regresses and he speaks Austrian. Is that what happens? Yeah, something like that. Like he. It's a result of the psychological. Basically, yeah. yeah. And he's just the intensity in this whole this little scene is. I don't know. I like Escape Plan too. I I do like Escape Plan. We'll watch it. Um, It reminds me a lot of a earlier '90s movie that may ring a bell, starring Christopher Lambert. It's called Fortress. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that one. That's a dark horse. If we were having best movies of the '90s, I might (laughs) mention it. Uh, But it's very similar. It's a futuristic prison, just like an Escape Plan, um, except uh, this is like a super futuristic prison, and it's like 2200 in Fortress. And an Escape Plan, I think it's uh, this is before Mortal Kombat, maybe even present day. This is pre Mortal Kombat, Christopher. Oh, uh, this is ninety two. 92. So yeah, then it's pre Mortal yeah. Kombat, Christopher. Uh, Fortress is a fucking awesome movie nice. and nice. one of the more underrated sci fi classics, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I've got it on Blu Ray, so I'll bring it next time for you. <laughs> that Blu Ray is worth a pretty penny too. Uh, Escape Plan. Let me write that Escape down. Plan. Yeah, uh, that's a good hell of a double feature, actually. Now that I think that, about yeah, it. Yeah, that would be so good. So start off with Fortress just because of the age, and then move on to Escape Plan and see how uh, see how future. Futuristic prison movies have evolved uh, over the years. Skip over Half Past Dead, which was a piece of shit. In the and middle don't 2000s. watch the sequels to Escape Plan, apparently, because they are not good. There's you know, sequels. The sequels are There's two rough. sequels, and I think ba- Batista is in one yeah, of Batista's them. Yeah, Batista's in one of them. They, they picked some some other WWE some wrestlers to, to be in. But them. the first one is very good. The first one's decent. Yeah, it's good. Huh. Now I'm gonna have to watch that this week. Too. 
<laughs> Every time we hang out with you guys, I end up catching up on shit. Some right? stuff. So yeah, I, mean, I know. Yeah. I gotta so watch all these movies. Yeah. Ran- so did anybody go back and watch any of the movies that they haven't seen from the last uh, podcast? Absolutely. I wanted to. I've had other things going no. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Any of the stuff you uh, you do. I didn't catch Charlie saying cloud. Uh, I was gonna say I'm <laughs> gonna borrow that from somebody. Now there was a there was an interesting thing, and this is uh, a little. Uh, bird's eye view into the group chat that we have on the side so about three or four days after our first conversation of 2010 2011 2012 uh just a random saturday i went to a movie store and they were having a large clearance sale and 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 man uh this is recharge which is off preston and uh some other street uh recharge there's there's obscure movies i've been trying to find i should have known about anyway recharge if you're listening at all uh you can sponsor us too because i've talked (laughs) you guys up anyway they have a they had a clearance sale that weekend and it was dollar and two dollar movies i'm like i'm not gonna find anything good in this batch (laughs) and sure enough i found a certain someone like three or four of their movies of uh, the early parts of the decade where they're not Charlie St. Cloud, but there Troll? were uh, no uh, <laughs> Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids was oh. there. Cedar Rapids, Bad yeah. Words was Bad there. Words. And the third one was oh, so. Hold on a second. What was the third one? Oh, it was McConaughey. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Killer Joe. Yeah. Killer Joe. Yeah. Killer Joe. Yeah. Killer Joe. Oh, and then to, t- to top it all <laughs> off, Morgan was there. The movie. <laughs> Not Morgan the Man. Uh, Morgan the Movie, which is a pretty cheesy sci fi movie it from was. a couple it of years ago. It had good moments, but yeah. But these four movies were in a stack of about 20. And I'm like, there's no way this is happening. And plus, Morgan's here. Uh, Morgan the Movie, not the man. That's but, funny. But uh, a lot of his choices were there. And I picked a, a couple of them up uh, Cedar cool. Rapids. And I've seen Killer Joe, so I didn't need to. But. Uh, yeah, anyways, I, I have g- gone back and seen some of these. Nice. Got a lot of time on my hands I after 12 o'clock. I had planned to, o'clock. and life had other cho- uh, ideas. Fair <laughs> enough. How about you, Maggie? No. <laughs> How about you, Miguel? I, I have no. a list. Um, we will go was, down there. There was one. I have to find a set of my other notebooks. But yeah, there was, there was a couple that I did, and actually I'm borrowing Charlie St. Cloud from our friend Jeff. Uh, because you mentioned it, I remember. I am, I'm like, oh fuck, that I'm not <laughs> gonna bad. watch that movie. <laughs> bad. And troll. Who Miguel's mentioned troll? Is it you? And troll. Troll, troll hunter. hunter. Troll yeah, hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, yeah. Troll yeah. hunter. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Love troll hunter. You're just mad because you like Zac Efron. No, I don't. Like that. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, I do. I do now. Then when they, he came out during that movie, I fucking hated him. <laughs> I like him now. I yeah. like him in Baywatch. I like him. He can be funny as shit. Funny. Yeah. As a comedic relief guy. His neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely got a lane for uh, like the comedy. Yeah. So what about you, Sasha? What is your number two? Number two, Snowpiercer. <laughs> yes. Because in my mind, it came out in 2013. It did get a Korean release in 2013. The director's Korean. Uh, this movie premiered in overseas theaters. Uh, this is when uh, the timing of, of, of this movie is pretty important, too, because the subject material is very controversial. Um, and some people really hate this movie and i get it uh, because it speaks on stuff that is very difficult to talk about uh yeah and snowpiercer uh, classism for one i'll get to that in a second but the reason i love this movie first run through is because of a video game again uh, i was playing bioshock at the time bioshock one two Ooh. and bioshock infinite this is Bioshock on a train. So there you go. I just sold you on Snowpiercer if you've ever played Bioshock because this is as close to a Bioshock movie as we'll ever see. Did you play Metro 2033? Uh, yes. And if that took place on a train, uh, I would, would say this like is that? Metro <laughs> 2033, but that takes place in multiple like train stations right, and, right. and subways. And I love that, that vibe, too, and it's great. Um, Snowpiercer is a movie that opens up and it's based off a, a very uh, – famous graphic novel and series of graphic novels as well that I've read bits and pieces of. But anyways, opens up uh, and we're introduced to a world that has seen climate change uh, take its course and everything in the outside world is basically frozen over and all that's left is this train that's multiple uh, cars long, um, I want to say 50 plus cars, and it's deemed indestructible uh, in the fact that it can pierce through snow and ice, the, hence the name Snowpiercer. So what's going on inside of this train is that at the very back of the train uh, are the, the grunts of the train, uh, the, the impoverished, basically, uh, the, the folks that 
don't have much to offer to the rest of the train. And that's made clear very quickly because of the makeup effects and the excellent sort of uh, costumes and details to these characters that is meant to portray them as the the poor uh, in, in this movie. And that's front and center from the jump. So right away, people who uh, are not in tune with the class separation and classism that that goes on in the real world are going to be turned off by this movie because it's made clear that these people are served uh, daily food regiments that consist of grounded up uh, insects and they're these black blocks of protein that uh, are given out to that class and that section of the train and there's a lot of, of introduction into how bad they have it off and it's made very evident through some very tough-to-watch scenes of which they uh, torture the lower class of the train. That's the intro to the movie. The rest of the movie is one character's pursuit to make it to the front of the train, uh, which is really just a, a symbol of a revolution, I guess, from the lower class to push uh, through and, and, and sort of get, make it through various stages. And this movie is really deep, and can um, I can touch on a lot of tangents. I'll try not to, but it's hard to ignore them <laughs> because that's what I got from the movie. So anyways, uh, Chris Evans is this main character, uh, hero's journey from the back of the train to the front of the train because that's what all of his constituents and the people that he represents want to see done. So the rest of the movie is a rebellion and uh, a revolution from train car to train car. And the way that this movie evolves visually and aesthetically is amazing because, as you would, you would guess, as they push through the train, things get a little bit more colorful. Things get a little bit more... Um, oh, this is going on here. Uh, when they get to the middle of the train, which is meant to represent the middle class yeah. uh, specifically, you start getting introduced to dentists, schools, uh, medical care, uh, proper medical care, proper food. And the scene that really stands out for me in this movie is the middle class scene with the kids. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the scene specifically, those who've seen Snowpiercer, but all the kids are wearing masks. Uh, and the teacher is a very uppity, Kristen Bell-like character. Uh, I, it's not actually her. It's She's very similar, though. And the kids are... Allison Pill. Okay. Yeah. The, the kids are learning a very um, indoctrinated version of education, uh, and they're getting it from this teacher who's obviously visually... Uh, a person of the system and uh, indoctrinated herself. But then things take a turn and, and uh, it, it leads to one of the more violent, visceral scenes of the movie. And uh, I won't spoil that, that bit, but it's very memorable and uh, it sort of touches on the fact that, um, that this actually happens in reality and that uh, the assembly line of human beings and adults that uh, are created and eventually become the middle class like they do in this in this train car uh, start off in this little school system that is intended to spit out these middle class um, gotta go back a little bit because the middle class adults are represented on this train as well as people uh, masked men with uh, no no idea of their surroundings, but they're prone for violence, and they spark one of the bigger confrontations in the movie as well. So anyway, um, that's the middle-class adults, and then these are the middle-class kids, so we get to see all of that come to fruition. And these are deep subjects because there's a lot of this, at least in my opinion, out in the real world and how we treat the lower class uh, and how the middle class is sort of the the controller of which way this whole thing can go. And this movie um, takes a more cynical look at that. And this eventually pushes to the front of the car where Ed Harris is very Truman Show-esque, the director mm -hmm. of everything that's going on. And um, Chris Evans has made it all the way to the end. And I'm going to spoil it. Um, Chris, uh, this whole thing was orchestrated by the chief of uh, the entire train itself his name in the movie is Wilfred I, I think uh, his character name 
And so he actually sparked the rebellion. And the reasoning behind uh, all of the rebellion is that balance is needed to keep a lot of these things uh, the way they are, status quo. Uh, so population control comes into play. Um, getting a new batch of kids to indoctrinate comes into play because it turns out that the kids are actually fueling the train going forward, and it's not some um, impenetrable force field that you're led to believe that it is, and there's like this whole mystical aspect of Snowpiercer to start the movie, but it, it turns out that it's just the poor kids that are fueling the engine uh, underneath it and making it go at full speed around and around the world for the last 20 years. And beyond all that, there's a father-daughter story as well that the supporting <laughs> characters uh, kick off, and that can go on a tangent for 30 minutes. I'll leave it at that. There's uh, so much in this movie that I dissected and got engrossed by because it drew parallels from the real world that I've uh, personally been very much against for a very long time and outspoken on. And this movie does it on that higher level, and it's good to see that from, from my perspective because it lets me know that I'm sort of not the only one that feels these sorts of things and that on Hollywood levels we can even get uh, that deep with cinema and, and that real and that gutsy with some of the stuff that we talk about even though we have to still add some element of fiction to it because we're just not quite ready to talk about the hardest stuff that we have to talk about as a civilization to move on from. So uh, anyways, uh, yeah, that's why Snowpiercer is number two. Cool. <laughs> so happy I have to follow that. Right? <laughs> Well, let me just lighten the mood. My number two movie is Bad Words. All right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is a brilliant <laughs> Jason Bateman comedy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Michael Q with TLC, but it's, it's Jason Bateman. Right. Yeah. Oh, like uh, you know, I know this is some mean humor, is I think one of the feedback that I heard I that they it didn't was, like yes. it. It was, uh, you know, it's kind of mean humor. But here you have a 40 year old who has somehow skirted the rules and is now in a spelling bee with uh, because he didn't ever graduate from the 8th grade or pass the 8th grade. Right. So you have a 40-year-old in a spelling bee with 10, 11, 12-year-olds. And the 40-year-old... Where have I seen this before? Uh, Billy Madison. That's sort of a savant. <laughs> except uh, the 40-year-old is a savant. That's true. He is. And can spell all the words. Uh, and it's just hilarious, his interaction with uh, the kids throughout the whole thing. He's just mean to them. He cusses at them. In inevitably, he becomes a friend with one of them. Um, it's everything I want to do in life as a 40-year-old. I just want to be mean to little kids. Well, you, you can't uh, do it as a 40-year-old because uh, you're 40. You're well past that. I'm not really. Not, not really. Not much. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, one of the funnier scenes, I think. Well, there's a lot of funny scenes in it, really. But uh, when he's uh, they're getting on the elevator together and, uh, and the little kid's asking... Jason Bateman's character, Guy Trilby, he's asking him, what's your favorite word? I think my favorite word is subjugate. <laughs> uh, that one was really funny. Um, he, you know, he starts to befriend the little kid. as he's little kid's pretty persistent, and it's sort of a, uh, um, a strategy the little kid's father is putting the little kid up to to befriend Guy. So at the end, you know, Guy might, might not want to beat, beat him in the spelling bee, but... Guy shows him his first boobs. That was a pretty hilarious scene. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> it had its moments, I won't lie, but it, no, wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they get, a, they get in a fight again, and uh, later on, and, and, the, and the little kid's notebook that he has all his, his spelling bee words in, it's called Todd, and, and Jason Bateman uh, baits him into leaving his room, steals Todd, and goes to the pool, and is burning Todd and squirting fire starter on on todd uh what? it's just genius in a lot of uh a lot of ways yeah. but uh sounds yeah. genius it is <laughs> i'm sorry it's, it's mean sure comedy does. i understand it's bullying <laughs> no <laughs> mean comedy uh is oh, hilarious it, mean comedy is underrated of course at the end yeah. of friends <laughs> so it's fine so it's fine <laughs> yes totally fine yeah totally fine uh, they throw Jason Bateman's character, when he gets to the hotel, they don't have a hotel room for him. They put him in a maid's closet. Uh, and that, so that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, there's a really funny scene in there with Catherine Hahn again with, uh, where they're yeah. having sex. Yeah. yeah. She's uh, it's the don't, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. 
there's a lot of nice, funny stuff in that. I think it's a good, funny movie. I love movie. spelling bees. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch the spelling bees. When, when they start giving oh him words, yeah. it is pretty funny because, you know, the kids have difficult words, but then they give him just absolutely Impossible fucking words. crazy words. Yeah, yeah, they try to rig the tournament to but get him out of her mind. So yes, he's a savant. He, he steps up to the plate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Anyway, fun movie. One of my favorites of 2013. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go super, super popular for my number two choice. Uh, Hunger Games Catching Fire. Um, the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy. It was my favorite book. And I love it so much because they did a great representation for the movie. So, uh, so yeah. A bunch of action. Freaking such a bigger budget. So freaking crazy! Uh, what's a lot his of face? political um, elements, though. It is a lot of political elements, yeah. and uh, oh god, now I can't think of his name. It's Snowpiercer Redux. Oh, if Philip. You think about it. Yeah, I know. I was gonna <laughs> say they're very similar yes. in, yeah. in ways because you have the whole class system and and the whole like you mm-hmm. know color getting more colorful as you get to the center, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, and it's that necessary. Because yeah. yeah. you got Philip Snowpiercer's Seymour. not gonna appeal to teen girls, and no. Hunger Games will. Yeah, you got Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah. that comes into it. So that's whenever oh shit yeah. gets really Love good. Oh, um, Donald Sutherland is in this one too. Yeah, well, he's yeah, awesome. he's yeah he's in all three, but th- I mean it is uh, Sam. One? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Sam Kaplan in this movie too. Um, he plays Finnick. Mm. He's gotten to be yeah. one of my favorite actors. So he's he's not in it. He's not in enough stuff. And you know what? If they're not gonna do Idris Elba as James Bond. Then I'm really rooting for Sam Kaplan to be. I just want that to be I on have record. No problem with Sam Kaplan being James Bond. <laughs> I don't need James Bond to be collecting Social Security if he is an American <gasps> citizen. <gasps> you take that back. <laughs> Sam's old ass Idris Elba. Um, Listen, yeah, Idris he Elba missed his window by yeah. at least 15 years. 15 years okay, ago. All y'all, huh? all y'all can leave. Yeah. Idris the house Elba was right just right? in uh, a very action oriented movie, and he pulled and it he's, off. And he's about quite to be. Well. He's the best part of that movie. Well, he's really? the Hobbs and Shaw. Hey. Sorry. He's the uh, he's the uh, only listen, that's a no, great he's, he's, he's about he's the only good part of that movie. He's also no, in he's Suicide not. Squad. I th- no. it hasn't been officially announced, that's but true. he's gonna probably Deadshot. be Deadshot. Those yeah. are those are single roles. I mean, if you're gonna play James, pick up James Bond. You got to be in it for eight years. I mean, when yeah, whenever that's da- true. Daniel Craig picked up James Bond, he was. Th- yeah. Four thirty nine or forty, which is old. So you're saying by the time his tenure would be done, he'd be a sixty year old, sixty five, seventy years old. <gasps> well, he doesn't have to do four or five movies. No, uh, there, he are, doesn't. there is the president for you know Timothy Dalton or uh, George Lazenby. If we want to get real specific, uh, one movie. They were pretty old. One, yeah, yeah and Timothy had two. He did two or three. Uh, mm-hmm. He did License to Kill, uh, Living, Daylights. Living Daylights, and maybe another one that I can't oh, remember. No, no, if no, not, it was only two. One, yeah. Pierce Brosnan only did three. Or was it Listen, four? Yeah, if you four. count Die Another Day, that piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Idris Elba can be James Bond whenever Idris he's Elba 80 for Bond. all I give a shit. True. Uh, Absolutely true. So that'll be the only reason I, why I want to run to the theater and go I see these James you. Bond movies. Your, your, your crush is clouding your logic, <laughs> so get the fuck out of with that bullshit. <laughs> he could pull it off, Shut though. your mouth. He, he, he yes. could do a pretty damn good job. But anyway, anyways, Catching, catching Fire, fire is it's, it's good. How did we good. get from Catching Fire to James Bond? Listen, I will try to bring up Idris Elba in any conversation uh, I have. Yeah, so. it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's true. Um, yeah, I want to hear it. Yeah, no. <laughs> catching Fire, uh, if you weren't part of the billions of people that saw it in the theater or whenever it came out, go see it. I'm, I'm not going to really sit here and explain it because, I mean... Yeah, that was pretty. It was pretty damn popular. So just, just go see it. Whatever. Yeah, it's one of those <laughs> movies that you probably at this point w- want to dedicate a weekend to watch the whole series. Don't watch it. Don't yeah, watch. Don't yeah. watch. You Fire can't watch it by itself. Yeah, you, can, yeah, you have to. Do don't yeah. watch Hunger Games and then wait like months for Catching Fire. Yeah, just, just watch them all. And yeah, be, be the done weekend. with them. It's definitely yeah. worth them. Like they're all worth a good watch. All those movies are really yeah, good. Yeah, they're good. I, I don't know which of the Hunger Games books is my favorite because I think when I read Catching Fire, it felt more more like a horror novel. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were deaths in the first book, but the second time, the second book felt like almost a uh, Stephen King horror with the deaths and the sense of irony that it had. Really, really dark sense of humor. Yeah, but you did. love horror. And I do, and that's the maybe reason why I love Catching Fire so much. And that translated to the screen. I remember watching Catching Fire feeling like this yeah, feels almost yeah. Stephen King-esque with the deaths and the storytelling. So oh yeah, is it my number two now? 
It is. I you know, so. Hunger Games. Well, before, uh, sorry, Miguel. Yeah, uh, no, no. <laughs> my only critique of the Hunger Games is that it's all based on Battle Royale, and it's all a very yeah, unoriginal it concept. It and uh, yeah, and it's just the American version of Battle Royale. Um, but it's more fleshed out. Uh, so there is that going for it. Suzanne Collins was that the yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. So she she put in some time in fleshing out the characters and and adding the the class uh, system sort of uh, the class warfare element, which is present yeah. in Battle Royale, but Battle Royale is a two and a half hour movie uh, that I think is original. I'm not sure if it's based on a manga or, or anime. So it didn't do a whole lot uh, in that two hours of, of screen time, but it's still a hell of a good movie. Start with Battle Royale. There's a there's a story supposedly, and it might be bullshit the way she tells it, is that she was clicking between two things, and it gave her the idea for the Hunger Games. It was some spelling bee, and it was some war movie or some bullshit. She said that... Surviving the game with Ice T and Rutger Hauer. <laughs> Maybe that was it. But she that said that she was clicking Hunger on games. the channel between two things, and that gave her the idea that night That's to write crazy. the Hunger Games. Um, it's, it might be bullshit. She probably watched Battle Royale. Yeah, and it like, is a, based on a manga. Okay. Oh, Battle Royale is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, most, okay. most of that stuff is. Well, yeah. My number two is American Hustle. I know it's a very, very really? mainstream. The Academy movie. has entered the building, folks. <laughs> it did too. You didn't it have did. a problem when it was Interstellar. No, <laughs> <laughs> you did Interstellar not. didn't win anything. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. Uh, another Shocking. movie that got shafted. No, I think it got uh, maybe sound editing. Oh. Some boring shit that nobody cares about except no. for the people that are. Because they that don't field. even give out at the, like the no. regular ceremony. Did it's it a yeah. Listen, it got nominated for best picture. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I thought it was something. Yeah. But either way, but yeah, I mean, I it American Hustle is one of those movies that I know it was so prepackaged. It was made to be for the Academy. So it was Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, it was. But I still liked it though. Yeah, I mean, there was there was there was a well-executed movie. There was no weak link in it. Um, the most obnoxious person in the fucking movie still wasn't the weakest link, which was Jennifer Lawrence. Her character was so cringy in that, but that's what she needed to be. And that was a strong year for her. Yeah, it was. Yeah. She fucking killed. Oh yeah, she's been yeah. Games well, anyway. she's all over your list. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I know, I know about. somebody who liked Red Sparrow. Uh, that's incidental. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I think Maggie has a bigger crush on Jeff Florence than I do. Hey, uh, I liked Red Sparrow. Oh <laughs> uh, anyway. It's a good movie. Point, point. <laughs> I've actually seen that one. It's a good movie. It was a good movie, and it's another one of the many examples of Christian Bale transforming right. himself. You know, yeah. Yeah. The guy will be the mechanic and be anorexic. The guy will be Dick Cheney. It's, it's odd. Uh, yeah, his transformation in The Machinist is very similar to somebody else's transformation. that uh, you, you just mentioned it in 2014. I know. Uh, I the uh, guy who starved himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, to look yeah. like a coyote. Those two guys, man, they, they go all out for their roles. They yep. are. Uh, but again, American Hustle is it's, it's a very good all around movie. <laughs> uh, it's what's his name? Uh, who also David, d- o Russell. David O. Russell, who uses the, his peeps in all the movies. Yeah. Christian so Bale, Ryan's Jennifer Playboy. Lawrence, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Those are his peeps. And you know what? It's okay because they're all character actors, so they can kill it. So, yeah, that's all I'd say. I really liked that movie. It was not as disappointed as prepackaged as it was. Cool. And are we at what? No. Number one. Oh, okay. We are. Heather, Heather uh, you want to kick us off with number one? Sure. So, um, my number one will be a little controversial, but I might have some people that agree with me. I uh, I'm gonna have to go with Thor: The Dark World. Uh, Holy <laughs> mackerel! <laughs> oh yes, you're twi- right. Twi- 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 it's twi- yes. so good, right? That is also my number one. I know, I knew it would be. Oh yeah. dang, that's how weird, guys. You? Uh, that I've got yours? Thor: Dark World at number one as Holy well, shit, Maggie. Holy shit! Look at that. <laughs> Podcast canceled. <laughs> Okay, so oh, sorry. So oh, really, we, what's your number How do y'all one? Really? Okay, no, we are Let's totally her. trolling Let's Maggie. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Troll <laughs> successful. I couldn't even look. Looks y'all like in we succeeded. If, if you guys we, can't see it, but she was really upset yes, that we all had. Yes, extremely upset. If we were playing football, you just jumped off sides. Yes, yes exactly. We have got yes. the first down. Like she's losing it over here. What? What do you mean? I that's am. number one. Like Morgan probably like, hasn't what even the seen fuck it. Did y'all see it? This movie. <laughs> Morgan doesn't even like Marvel. <laughs> exactly. But I, like, I should have known. Whenever you said it, I was like, this, this, uh, this bitch. The only damn Marvel movie he's gonna see, and of course, it makes his number one. You best <laughs> believe it's on my honorable mentions, though. It is. I actually. Liked it. It is not my number one, no. but I had to oh. go there. Oh yeah. um, we we or- orchestrated this. I was this like, in y'all advance. organized oh, yes. it <laughs> just a bit. Y'all bastards. Um, my actual <laughs> number one is uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Ooh, that's good. And, uh, the Academy has re entered the number one. Yeah. Yeah. I love really? Dallas Buyers Club. It's such the a Academy strong is movie. Everywhere. Um, Matthew that's McConaughey. Yeah, Matthew Jared McConaughey, Leto? of course, is, yes, is awesome. Jared Leto is 
he makes that Phenomenal. movie for me. Let's say, who's the, who do you think is the best part of the movie? Oh, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Easily, yeah. yes. Yeah, I mean, I get that too. Yeah, it's such a good movie. It's so hard to watch, though. Like, I, I think I've only seen it the one time, but uh, it's I've seen stuck it a couple of times, yeah. It, it it's really a tough, does. It's a tough watch, but definitely a great movie. Yes. That movie made my hard-ass stepdad tear up. Oh, that's yeah? That's the kind of a good movie it is, because my, my stepdad's the biggest hard-ass you'll ever meet. He's like the Mexican Jack Nicholson. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, he was telling me that that movie. He thought it was devastating. He yeah, loved it. It's it is. It's it's awful, but it's fantastic at the same time. Yeah. Good fucking choice. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one is a movie that uh, I'm not sure many of you have heard of or seen, uh, but it is another nod to Denny Villeneuve. This is his uh, second American movie. Prisoners was already on this list. This is Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, and uh, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. So <laughs> let me affairs. get into this one. Uh, okay. This is numero uno for so many reasons. Uh, this is the story of Jake Gyllenhaal, who is a husband to a pregnant wife, and within he's a college professor of ancient history. And within about 20 minutes... He is recommended a movie from, I want to say a co-worker, or just, so, yeah, someone in the faculty uh, who says, have you seen any good movies lately? And a faculty member recommends a movie to him. He goes home, he watches it, and he sees someone who looks exactly like him uh, in the movie. Exactly like him. And he, from that point on, becomes obsessed with tracking this person down. And uh, it is on the surface level, a doppelganger movie, and since none of you have seen this, I will not say anything else. Um, I will say that yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, if he flexed his acting muscle in uh, Prisoners, to my heart's content, he went above and beyond in this one because this movie is better than Prisoners and Snowpiercer for me, and that's uh, yeah. that took a long time for me to come up with these three, and sort of, I, I didn't mix, uh, mix and match uh, for the weeks building up to this one, but I watched Enemy again uh, three or four weeks ago, and maybe that's why I jumped to the top of the list. I've seen Prisoners recently as well, and I've seen half of Snowpiercer uh, recently as well, but I watched Enemy start to finish for the third or fourth time, and it's another one of those movies that changes and evolves as I change and evolve and age and mature and get more from it, um, it's a dive into some of the things that, as um, as heterosexual males, d and there's three of us at the table, we don't like talking about a lot of stuff that this movie talks about, and it gets a lot of things just... It, it's a fun rabbit hole for for guys yeah. in their 30s to go down yeah. it oh. is a yeah. hell of a lot of fun yeah he's one of, it's actually i just i'm looking this up because i didn't know about this movie yeah. since he's the guy who made blade runner 2049 as a denny yeah. arrival yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, arrival you kept um, saying the name um but what? it took seeing the name and i, was, ah, I it, then it oh. registered oh. i was okay. like oh yeah. shit yeah oh, the, the arrival. The arrival french canadian french sir yeah. french canadian yeah. like correct how yourself yeah. sir <laughs> You're saying it right. I never knew how to pronounce this guy's yeah, name. Danny Villeneuve. Um, I already say. Uh, I always used to say Villeneuve. Like Villeneuve. Well, that's uh, that's that the Mexican in me. Sure. Yeah. Spanish. Yeah. yeah. I always say Villeneuve. But yeah, that guy. No, no that's a common amazing. last name in Quebec. So yeah, it just uh, it's inherent. That how do you say it again? Villeneuve. 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 Yeah. New yeah. New City is what it translates to, which oh, is oh, actually nice. kind of cool. Yeah. No, well, it looks like his his wife in the movie is she was from Inglorious Bastards. Uh, yeah. Shoshana. Yes. Oh, I love her too. And I don't, uh, again, I haven't given anything away, but this movie uh, is dark, dark, dark. And um, it starts with him just watching this movie and seeing that he sees himself in it. <laughs> His doppelganger. Though. His doppelganger. And um, he um, is very interested in what the hell's going on. And uh, from that point on, it becomes a, a stalking hunt. Uh, into this man's life, this doppelganger's life, and he uncovers a lot more than he bargained for. And there's uh, infamously, and this is uh, this is not a spoiler, but this is one of the most frightening 
endings in the history of movies. Really? In the history of movies. Ooh, that's, God that's damn a lot it. Of hype. <laughs> yeah. The history of movies, period. The final frame will scare you. There's no, no yeah, <laughs> so there's the expectations. I'm not even worried about setting that bar because it will. Um, but you won't see it coming, and you, yeah, even me talking about it, you won't see it coming. I was like, all right. So, we'll yeah. I, I don't own it, unfortunately. Uh, this is really? a movie that is streaming on Netflix. It's really. on Netflix oh. right now. Justwatch.com. Okay, we're going to watch that probably this weekend. Yep. So, I added shit it to the list. yeah, I, I wanted to buy this, but um, it, it deserves a spot in my collection easily. But um, I knew that I could watch it on streaming, so I just didn't pick it up. But, yeah. man. We're going to probably pick it up this weekend. Or, well, we're, I don't need to. We need to. We can just we'll watch see. it. Yeah. We'll a weekend for Awesome movie. movie. Awesome movie to watch with your spouse or significant other because there's a lot of stuff that is uncomfortable to talk about in this movie brought front and center. and it, Like it, Eyes Wide Shut kind of? Yes, like Eyes Wide Shut and, and just um, uh, it's, it's a deep dive into a lot of stuff. Okay, yep. so we're going to check it out this Saturday. Right. It doesn't have to be if you don't want it to be, but I want it to be a deep dive, of course. So, <laughs> so Enemy. That's my number one Enemy. Well, my number one was Dallas Buyers Club as well. <laughs> Sorry, so oh, you can right. skip right over me. <laughs> no, um, that's that's a good, that's a interesting a good movie, movie to yeah. be number ones on two people's lists here. Good. Um, my my number one is probably um, Thor: Dark World. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never, <definitely>. ever, <laughs> never would happen. Um, is uh, well, it's it's her. Uh, oh, that's a good movie. With Joaquin Ooh. Phoenix. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know anybody that's just kind of like, eh, kind of liked it. Um, they either hate it or they really like it. Um, I think this is like Joaquin Phoenix. So, oh, so, he's so good in this movie. And it's basically, if you haven't seen it or heard of it, it's about uh, a guy that falls in love with an OS. And movie of the times. It's yeah. I feel but like it was good. It's so so relevant, and even coming out in 2013, so ahead of and its then, time too. Uh, was it Scarlett Johansson that did the voice? Scarlett Johansson did the voice, yeah. and you know what's funny? They oh, had listen. they had another actress that did the whole movie mm. as a voice, but the director, uh, uh, Spike Jones, he's he was like this. It just doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. And so they got Scarlett Johansson, and she redid the whole movie. Um, and you want Scarlett Johansson as your voice? Uh, yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, you, yeah, yeah, right there with you. yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it either. Read me a bedtime but story. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's such a it's such a cool movie because it's just like you know, is he just falling in love with an OS, or is it because she's you know, it's hey, read me my emails, or you know, or hey, you're reminding me to tell somebody happy birthday, and it's somebody that I can talk to all the time, and you know, she's just feeding you information and it's not just him it's a whole bunch of people that are falling in love with their os's mm -hmm. and having relationships with them it's pre-alexa too so yeah. like you said yeah it's, it's well ahead of its time and yeah well and i mean this one is so hyper responsive that sh you can have a whole conversation and she's ai it, it, yeah she's ai yeah. like you can't have a conversation with alexa or um what's the other one siri Siri, of Cortana, yeah. Cortana, whatever, yeah, you can have them tell Microsoft. You jokes. So I think that's the limit, right? it's pretty much, yeah. So it's pretty funny. It's such a good movie. It is. It has a lot of heart in it. You you really root does. for that relationship, even though on the surface you're like he falls in love with an AI or OS or whatever. Yeah. Like that sounds so stupid. Even though he's got a porn stash too. Yeah, he does have a little bit of a porn <laughs> stash. A good, he does. It's a good stash. Well, I mean, and, and Walking Beast, like he's not a he. He lost weight for this role too. Like he's real scrawny, and he he writes uh, letters. Like his job is to write these really nice letters. Like people pay them to write a really a nice, um, oh, what a cool job. Super uh, Hallmark style. Yeah, Hallmark style personalized letters, and. Chris Pratt is also in it, which that just came to mind too. This is before he got super big. Yeah. Um, I, it's such a sweet movie, and it's also just really sad too. What mm -hmm. happens towards the end, and you're just like, Joaquin Phoenix just pulls you into that performance, and Scarlett yeah. Johansson too. Even though she's just a voice throughout the whole thing, yeah. like you, I mean, you really kind of get where a relationship would develop 
especially with this guy because he doesn't really go out very much too and you know and he's kind of like not expecting to fall in love with he's his an OS. Introvert. it just happens yeah. yeah so it's such a sweet movie and i watch it like w- every time it comes on tv i'll watch <laughs> it it's so good um that's another movie that we went and watched with rachel marie so yeah. yeah a lot of we saw it at the dollar theater and we loved it we did see it at the dollar theater in mesquite and nobody else is in the theater there's probably 20 seats <laughs> <laughs> and we were the only ones. Sometimes that's the best way to see a movie. Yeah, sometimes yeah, that is. is. The I best. mean, it is. And we you don't had have to deal with the talkers, the popcorn eaters. Yeah. It was our yep. own private theater that night. It was yeah, nice. it was great. Well, even when we went and saw Big Hero 6, um, we were in the big ass theater in, in the Mesquite Theater, and there was no one in there. We went and saw like a 10 <laughs> 30 showing. Yeah, we saw it so fucking late. Yeah, we're like, well, nice. shit, if we're ever going to see kids' movies, we're going to see it at 10 30 when right? no one's here. No kidding. <laughs> On a school night. It so it was great. But yeah, her, absolutely my all time. Like, it, it's, it's. I'm it's glad him. it wasn't him. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm just glad it wasn't him, uh, and it was her instead of him. Yeah, I, yeah because it's... him would have been a little. What the hell is him? <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm the glad Lord it's Scarlett Jesus. Johansson, and it's not a male. I, I'm glad what it wasn't him. What an interesting yeah. concept that would be, though. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just glad it wasn't. I think it's one of Joaquin Phoenix's best roles. Oh yeah, really. easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I put that up there with Gladiator. And Scarlett He's Johansson, her voice acting was so good in this movie, too. And mm-hmm. it's all really sincere. And I mean, you almost picture her there. Yeah. Um, which is easy because we all know what she looks like. And so it's like you can picture her just having a conversation with him, which that had to be really hard because Joaquin Phoenix is not sitting there feeding her lines, you know, because they had to ho- completely redo her. They had to completely re edit the voice because, like I said, I can't remember the original actress's name that they casted and then she comes along and does the whole performance so in the future we'll be able to ask our ai know, right? all these questions that we yeah. can't remember on the spot but not that you can't do it right it's, now. it's a great movie i love it I, it's probably in maybe one of my probably in my top 10 maybe top 15 favorite Samantha movies of all time Morton. Yes, oh, Amanda Morton, right. that's right. Uh, do you remember she, the movie Broken Arrow with John Travolta and Christian Slater? The okay. she is what now are you going to bring up she's about the, this one? No, I love Broken Arrow. No. She's the okay. chick uh, in Broken she's Arrow. She's currently on that's uh, how I Walking Dead right, right now. Yeah. About yes. I, Princess Peach was the original voice? Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, that's Samantha Morton. I didn't hate that idea. So, yeah. But, no, like, she recorded the whole thing, and but she... She does have a cute voice. Yeah, but she said uh, that she heard Scarlett talking in it because, you know, the director was like, you know, um, we're, we're replacing you because it just doesn't sound right. And they got Scarlett Johansson and they were like, you know, here's Scarlett doing the voice. And she's like, oh, yeah, she's way better. And she, she has like, an gave interesting, her blessing. She has a soothing so. sort of robotic-esque type of voice. Scarlett? Mm-hmm. A little bit, yeah, but it's also very. She has a very soothing because it's not really high pitched. She's mm-hmm. not. It's not really deep. It's like that. It's mm-hmm. yeah, that teensy bit of rasp. But and it's, it's so. It's it, to me, her voice is really soothing because she's you know it's really calm and she's. It's also quietly uh, dominating too. She can dominate. Yeah. She can dominate a conversation. Like well, I mean, we she we get a little. Yeah, we get yeah. a little bit of it in in the Black Widow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, her. <laughs> Ta-da. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, so good choice. Yeah. All right, what's the lecture number one? Her? What, what do you think it is? Is it her? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Wow. <laughs> it was wow. a tie between it because at first I was thinking about it and I was just like, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, you know, catching fire because I love that movie a lot. Um, but I was I was looking back on it and it, it, I was like, if there's one movie that I liked a little bit more than that, just a little bit more, it was her. There's something prophetic about it in a really uncomfortable for way. Sure, for sure. I don't really know if we're going to be having affairs with our AIs in the next 20 years, but I can tell you that well, the f- fooling us. Th- the type of character that Joaquin Phoenix is, is where it gets sort of uh, prof- prophetic and, and a little serious. Uh, the introvert who uh, is antisocial and uh, w- does want to spend more time on his computer or on his cell phone and just doesn't socialize period uh w- for whatever reason whether it's uh just anxiety or, or whatever it may be 
he sort of embodies that. Uh, it's a little more holistic in in his version, and a little more. Uh, he's not as antisocial as as the current demographic can be. But there are a lot of people out there who just spend ninety percent of their time behind the screen uh, of a computer or yeah. a cell phone, yeah. and they're they're connected to their computers, and they know the ins and outs of it. Uh, and they. They have relationships with well, their laptops. I think that that was some of the subliminal messages of this movie. Yes, um, for sure. And it was ahead of time. That's why, like mm-hmm. you said, it's it's yeah. super prophetic because now in 2019 we see we see people who we see a lot more than live, we did 30 years ago. Yeah, they yeah. they live life through their computer because yeah. of some deep rooted reasons. The and only way you can meet new people. The second life is their life at this point. Yes, um, uh, it's yeah. it's a it, it taps into escapism. It taps into uh, a, a lot of um, fight or flight, uh, just natural things where the reality has has sort of uh, run its course for some of these individuals and uh, the alternate reality, which happens to be a simulated one on a computer, is just more uh, approachable. Appealing, yeah, sadly, approachable yeah. and appealing. Yeah, there you yeah go. one thing I loved about the movie is, is I mean, this is this more superficial thing that I enjoyed about it was the the uh, the way technology was shown whenever he's on like mm-hmm. the subway or the train. And mm-hmm. He's like, he puts his little piece in his ear and he's like, hey, read me my emails. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, there you go. I see that three years from now. Yeah. I and mean, uh, yeah, uh, right there with you. And then the idea of being able to walk up to a kiosk, wave your phone underneath it, and you can download, you know, terabytes of software in microseconds. So there's a little bit of superficial aspects like that that we know are coming in the next decade. That's probably going to come here in two years. And then with that comes the scary things like the idea of of AI, um, an idea of a software. Getting to know you. Yeah, of a software becoming actually self-conscious is something that I think is horrible. It is absolutely something that should never happen. I don't know if it's ever practical. Yeah, kids, watch Terminator if you think otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> really. But even fuck, okay, fuck them trying to take over the world. I'm more, ter- I, I'm more, I'm, I'm more comfortable with trying an, to get to know you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am here. more comfortable with an AI trying to nuke my ass than an AI trying to like trying to have an affair with me or like yeah, you know, or, get in our heads or feeding you ads that uh, it's it thinks, already happening. Yeah, oh, it's no, definitely it is, happening. Totally. Yeah. yeah, we do that with our phones right now. Mm-hmm. We do. I think we, do we have some. Did we talk about this in our last podcast? That we were talking about some shit. Yeah, just up on so. organic. <laughs> yeah, yes. showed up on our cell phones. Yeah, there's uh, so creepy. there's a lot of this recently in the news, and there's a lot of scary stuff about. About it um, that that should resonate with everyone out there because data aggregation has been going on well before we could even c- keep yeah. track of I it going had on. Had an idea from there. yeah when we were 13, 14 year olds using Netscape and Lycos uh, and Alta Vista. Uh, some of us Atari. were twenty five year olds, uh, but <laughs> anyways, when most of us were teenagers and on Netscape and, and all these uh, archaic forms of browsing the internet, data aggregation wasn't a, even a thought on our mind uh, all of these searches that we had as kids uh, w- and everything we were interested in sort of paved the way for the system that rolled out in the last 10 years and it, it's like the Disney model of movies right uh, they latched on the, the big tech companies latched on to what turned us on to to the internet and what hooked us in the first place and that was information information uh, porn, uh, yeah. sports, news, all this stuff, and now it's in all these condensed forms that are, are intentionally created to, you know, shit out the little dopamine hits Uh-oh. and the very... Uh, Audio's gone. Oh. There no, we it's go. back. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was just me? <laughs> yeah. My bad. Super deep, sorry, super deep dive into the reality, but uh, it's it's what makes some of these movies so good is that they spark these realizations in the real world and and there's a there's a whole topic to discuss there in the existentialism of movies. Yeah, but I mean that, that's all I about is any movie that's it's it sort of uh, pushes people uh, for introspection. Yeah, there's there's re- there's yeah. reason why it pushes you for introspection because yeah. there is something there that that is almost the only way that some of these things can get through to people now because yeah. they're not willing to just sit down at a table and talk about them um, and, and come home after a long day's work and, and just have a discussion about it with your significant other or with strangers. You just don't do that. So movies are one of the few ways still around uh, 
that in real time can present you with these things that you go home and you dedicate some time to think about on your own, and then you come up to with your own resolution, but the movie put the seed there in the first place, and yeah, technology is untapped. I'm, I'm really anxious into uh, seeing the types of technological movies that we, we get now, and I don't know that we're going to get a lot, because I think the secret's out that stuff like Ex Machina and Her and all that painted pictures that we are now living in. So now that the secret's out and people are like, hey, this movie was really prophetic. This movie was really prophetic. This movie's pretty much real life. Yeah. Total Recall is kind of prophetic. Uh, there's so many of these movies that were prophetic. The studios and the creators, they've got to mask their their prophecy even yeah. further right, right. Uh, to to avoid you know spilling the beans, getting outcast, and getting blackballed, and all this stuff. So that may be part of why creativity on the mainstream level is dwindling and dwindling because it's hard. It's it's tough sledding. It's like for, what's left? Yeah, what's left to well, we can we can forecast it uh, for fun if we want to, uh, but uh, it, it it gets tough for the folks who are scripting out these stories and they're like, how the hell do I send? A message, an important one, through a movie that I have to keep dumbed down, so that the studio execs say, "Hey, you're not, you're, not, you're going a little too far with this. We, we don't want, we don't want to talk about." And that's this. when you go to a twenty four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Except for Midsommar, right, Maggie? Listen, <laughs> hey, I I appreciate that it was an original right story, right. and no it's not based off of anything. Uh, it is. It's based on cultural appropriation and like. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Right. I just, I don't, I just. I was frustrated by it too. Did you guys? Yeah, I, I've seen Midsommar. Yeah, and I, I, that was the only review. I'll, I'll speak candidly here with you guys. That was the only review where I'm like angry as I'm listening to it, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wish I was there. Because you I completely disagree there. with it. Yes, uh, yeah. and I wish I was there for that one because I'd seen it and I got. Uh, basically, the reverse feelings about it, but maybe we'll get to that in 2019 <laughs> discussion. Oh yes, yes. yeah, because okay. that's going to be on somebody's list, and maybe uh, maybe we should add most hated movie at that time <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that'll be on y'all's list. Most it, it's I, well, I don't know. There's a lot of trash movies that are out this year, so <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but God, so, yeah, this, this 2019 is so harsh right now. Yeah. But um, I don't. Yeah, that one. Towards the end, it got laughable, <laughs> especially the scene at the at the barn. I was like, right. not impressed. I'm also I don't know yeah, this will be a off uh, off air discussion. Yes, uh, okay. right. All right, honorable mentions. Uh, so my first one is really not the typical sort of movie that I like because I can't generally stand Seth Rogen and <laughs> all of them. But this is the end. Ah, yes. yes. Oh my God, it cracks me oh, up. Yeah. It, it literally. Um. It's uh, Morgan hated it. Let me guess, because it's not yeah, his brand not like of it. comedy. Oh, I did not like it's it. It's so like. stupid, but I don't know. For whatever reason, I found it enjoyable and it was funny. Yeah, it, I thought it was I hilarious. Parts, I really did. I guess. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's my bad words. There you go. Oh. Um, so Dang. I've I like also it. got um, R.A.P.D., which is another oh. one that a lot of people I know did not yeah. like, oh. but you know I don't like that one. Yeah, yeah. watch it. Oh, it's, it's so ang it, it, it's anger know. inducing. I tried. I liked men, it. It's <laughs> Men in Black. <laughs> it is, but it's Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges, and which is why it made me more mad. <laughs> no, I I liked it. Yeah. And then uh, my last one is The Wolverine. Oh. Good choice. I didn't hate it. Yeah, I liked it. I liked the. I didn't like it. It kind of took it, you know, well, literally to a different place because it was in Japan, but. I don't know. I just enjoyed it. Uh, I uh, surprisingly, I don't have too many honorable mentions in 2013, but I do have a few. Uh, let's start with well, The Conjuring's already been spoken on. That was on my uh, honorable mentions, and also uh, Oblivion, starring Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. I got the year right this time. Hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, Oblivion's pretty cool. It's a futuristic sci-fi adventure where. Um, Tom Cruise is a drone repairman, and uh, he rep yeah. he reports on a daily basis with his partner in crime to a uh, higher up that's out in outer space on how is all the drone repairs coming along, and how is the sucking of uh, all the water out of Earth's uh, ecosystem coming along because... We're evil AI, and we want uh, to take all the water and move on to the next planet. And that's a condensed version of what takes place in the movie. But Morgan Freeman is a pretty good character. 
uh, side character in this movie, and it's just a fun yeah, sci-fi time. I about that movie. Yeah, a I fun movie. I know I saw it, but it's been a long, long time. That's one of those movies yeah. that uh, is amplified in, in quality for me because of the score and the director as well. There's a pretty strong score. Joseph Ooh. Kaczynski is the director. He uh, did Tron Legacy earlier Ooh. on in the decade, doing yeah. Top Gun, uh, the Top Gun follow-up, which I actually am okay with because um, I think it's good in good hands. Uh, that guy is a pretty good director. Nice. Uh, next up is The Secret Life of a Walter Mitty uh, that came I, out. I wanted year. to see that. What a, what a, I, I don't have a lot of feel-good stuff on any of these lists because <laughs> feel-good oh. movies to me are, they're not a... Uh, ben Stiller? I'm going to be a little, yeah, ben Stiller. a little cheesy here, but I, I seek out dark stuff in movies because I just, uh, I, that's the stuff that I want to see on the big screen. Um, but this is a feel-good movie that... Um, Wow, talks a little talks a little bit about <laughs> uh, uh, an you. interesting subject an interesting subject uh, daydreaming and uh, sort of the escape from reality uh, as well and Walter Mitty's like this uh, guy who's just had enough with the, the the real world and the normal world and his job and the routine and so he escapes into his daydreams that are part of who he is, and uh, he sort of starts living them out and following the uh, runaway uh, trajectory of what it would be like if you just lived freely and, and passionately every moment of your life. And that's a hell of a good message. And um, well, it, it he's trying to strongly. he's trying to find a. a a photographer. For yeah, there's there's yeah. motivation behind all of this, yeah. but at the uh, but he's also like doing things that he would never do. Right. Um, and and yeah, uh, really cool movie. Uh, next up is a serious movie that's a little depressing to talk about. Uh, this is based on a real world event. Um, took place in the early 2000s in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is Fruitvale Station. Uh, this is with Michael B. Movie. Jordan. This is sort of his uh, like acting chops uh, debut. No, he was in Chronicle oh, that's earlier, right, he was, but he wasn't and he was probably in some other stuff. Uh, but Fruitvale Station is like his emergence as uh, this guy can act too, and he's not just like a, a new sort of uh, face uh, to to look at. Uh, Fruitvale Station follows the last day in the life of a gentleman who uh, had a family and was uh, murdered by some Bay Area. Uh, traffic, um, public transit officers because of um, just a misunderstanding. And uh, this guy had a record, and he, he did serve some time in prison, and that goes into play into why he was handled the way he was handled. But it talks about a pretty dark subject that's also pertinent in uh, modern times. And a uh, pretty well-executed movie, and I'll, uh, really sad. Um um, next up, I've got Thor Dark World. Uh, yeah, we talked about that one. Um, actually, we didn't talk about it. But, <laughs> it <was good> <laughs> but Thor Dark World's fun. And yeah, you, and you Maggie, can talk about it. I'll cut it out. No, I'm not, uh, I, I don't need to touch on it too much. Uh, here's a, a movie that you guys probably haven't heard of, and you should because it's fun, and it's Ex Machina's little brother in a way. Uh, this is The Machine. Uh, this is a sci-fi awesome movie from that year. It's not as good as Ex Machina, but it's pretty much Ex Machina. And um, if you liked Ex Machina, you'll like The Machine. I did. And where The Machine sticks out is that it's very uh, Blade Runnery in uh, tone and in music and in setting. Um, but it doesn't have the budget of Blade Runner, so don't expect like a sprawling landscape of a city and, or Ridley Scott's mastery uh, behind the camera. But it is character wise just as good. Um, so the guy who made Don't Knock Twice. Oh, uh, well, okay. you like that movie? Yeah, I haven't I seen it. I've wanted to. Yeah, I saw it all late at night. That's with yeah. uh, Kate Sackhoff. Yeah. Of uh, Battlestar Galactica fame. Yeah, this they said I'm looking at the machine right now. It had, had a really low budget, but it's Yeah, this is Accelerator Media, which is like the A24 of action sci-fi, in my opinion. So Accelerator Media is another thing. If, you're, if anyone from Accelerator Media ever listens to this podcast, send us some free stuff because you guys are <laughs> Uh, I the think I saw that movie before called Eve. Oh, that's uh, there's a lot of movies like The Machine for sure. Who's Eve? Which one's Eve? Who's on Eve? Uh, Eve's like a robot that the government cooks up to uh, for assassinations. That's uh, oh Harry yeah. Uh, no, oh, Eve that? of Destruction. 
Is that even? Disturbing? Yes, that is an '80s nod. Hey, good one there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, second to last honorable mention, Frankenstein's Army. Um, don't know if anyone here has heard that. That's a fuck not of a fun all, movie. No. Okay, so this is a Nazi uh, horror movie slash zombie movie. Have you guys seen Overlord? Yes. It's very similar so to Overlord. Really wanted to see Overlord. Very similar to Overlord. But this movie is claustrophobic and uh, takes on a Frankenstein tone in that uh, this Nazi doctor creates abominations that are half uh, horror movie monsters and half mechanical, like... Uh, Think uh, think of uh, the Toy Story thing with the uh, legs and the head, the baby's mm, head. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that yeah. Sid makes. Yeah. Yes, uh, except this is a live action movie, and it, it feels like a, a haunted house movie. Uh, that's a good one. And the last of my honorable mentions is the one that I could probably um, talk about the most, but I won't. It's called Banshee Chapter, and this is one of those movies that if you're uh, a friend of mine for five plus years, eventually I will get to and I'll say, hey, now it's time for you to watch Banshee Chapter. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, this is a movie that focuses on DMT, uh, dimethyltryptamine, oh, um, and this is a movie that is prophetic in its conversation about a dimethyltryptamine because dimethyltryptamine was used in MK Ultra experiments of the 1960s to uh, sort of uh, test out mind control capabilities that the U.S. government had, and they actually did this stuff in my backyard, which is very unsettling, at the hospital that uh, I was born in and that my mother worked at for 20 years. Anyway, I have a uh, real uh, sense of intrigue and attachment to the whole MKUltra um, news and everything that is talked about in that realm because it's finally out that all of that actually happened through uh, full disclosure documents from the government themselves. This used to be a topic that was sensitive to, for people to talk about because you were labeled with a tinfoil hat or you were a conspiracy theorist. Anyways, back to Banshee Chapter. It's fiction. It's not a documentary. Uh, what's that? Banshee, Banshee, Chapter. Banshee Chapter is complete fiction, but it's rooted in uh, what MK Ultra history and lore in a fictional with fictional twists, um, of course. So this movie opens up with uh, a couple of folks testing out DMT uh, in their home and not knowing what the side effects are going to be. And you've got the whole Joe Rogan DMT experience, and then there's this DMT experiment, uh, experience, which is a bad trip, to say the least, because uh, crazy shit starts happening. And this is all observed through a VHS-like uh, tape uh, recording of the session by a news reporter who is the main protagonist in the story. So she observes her friend uh, having this hallucinatory, horrible, horrific uh, hard horror trip on DMT. And then she, uh, the movie kicks off and she goes on a seeking out of what actually happened and putting the pieces of it all together. And it is, um, if it were an X Files episode, it would be in your top five immediate uh, X Files yeah. episodes. Um, it's that good. The subject material is really risque and for its time um i'm surprised any movie was willing to talk about it because like i said mk ultra stuff is is not really readily accessible to folks uh it is now that a lot of the stuff is leaking out freedom of information there's a a, a I was telling a coworker about a nonfiction book coming out uh, in the last couple of weeks that just opens up the discussion for all of this. So the disclosure's there, but at the time in 2013, even though some of us knew that this was hardcore fact, it wasn't. And seeing a movie that was willing to tackle the subject was um, seldom and uh, a unique experience. Banshee Chapter is one of the movies that has more jump scare, not jump scares, more more really resonating goosebump scares than uh, most that I can remember. And the jump scares are pretty good, too. And, yeah, I just highly recommend it. If, if it was of higher acting quality and directorship, I'd probably have it in my top three. But uh, it, it just didn't do all that. Straight to video. Yeah, Banshee <laughs> chapter. It was a straight to video movie. Um, all right. Uh, I liked Elysium. 
Um, thought that was a pretty good little sci-fi movie. Um, Blum Camp, second part trilogy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't seen that. I haven't either. Um, I liked Riddick, yeah, although kind of like felt it. like it was kind of a remake of the first one when pit when the whatever Pitch Black or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. I thought it was sort of remakeish, but I, I still enjoyed that Riddick movie. I liked Gravity. Talked a little bit about that. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> we talked about how it was a, <coughs> a snooze fest. Movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so I thought it was solid, uh, but. You know me, I gotta do some comedy. From the uh, director of The Constant Gardener, so what do you expect? Oh god, that movie was uh, awful. A fucking snooze fest. Okay. <laughs> um, World's End was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, not as good as the other two movies that they made together, uh, Hot Fuzz and uh, Shaun of the Dead, but nonetheless was still pretty funny. Yeah, it was enjoyable, but I, I agree, it's not the same caliber in my opinion. the same caliber. Kind of an interesting, I guess, take on the alien uh, form uh, in that from that. It reminds me of the watch. Thing. A little bit, yeah, yeah. It kind of has that watch feel for it. Uh, I liked We're the Millers. Um, anybody check that one out? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah pretty I've seen funny. That. No regrets. You know? Yes, no regrets. <laughs> yeah. Not not even one. Uh, <laughs> you know Jennifer Aniston dancing in lingerie. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't make my top three. <laughs> that's okay, I guess. Um, uh, I also liked uh, Ender's Game. I'm not a comedy, but I did too. forgot that one. Yeah. Um, Can I shit on Ender's Game a little bit? Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, ah, it, it did right. make my top three, but I thought well, it was enjoyable. I uh, happen to have read, have you read the Orson Scott card? No, uh, n- no okay. I didn't read the book. So I did, and it's a piece of shit rendition of that book. That's um, what I've heard. I haven't yeah. read it either, but I enjoyed the movie well enough. Well, I, I just have issues with, with books that are, you know, 300 pages and canon sort of as far as sci-fi uh, fiction is – well, sci-fi is fiction. But um, as far as uh, – Ender's Game is one of those books that I- if you if you ask – Anyone coming up with a list of the greatest sci-fi stuff of all time? War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells, and then not too far down in the tiers is stuff like Ender's Game. And then the movie is one of those movies that w- the first time War of the Worlds came out, it, it has to meet it has to meet that precedent of the novel. And if it doesn't, then it's it's a piece of shit. And <laughs> And Ender's Game was that uh, for me. So if you didn't read the book, uh, Ender's Game was all right. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. That's yeah. exactly what I heard because I have a, one of my best friends, uh, Maurice, uh, who's obsessed with the book, was pissed about the movie. Yeah. It's and one of those movies that you just get aggravated about because the the source material is that good. It's like, yeah. It's yeah. How do you cock that up? Oh, here's how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I felt that way about a lot of m- movies that were once books. I felt that way about, it, ironically, that same actor, uh, Asia Butterfield. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did, an, he, poor kid, did another movie. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> he hasn't Peregrine. picked good roles. No, he hasn't. Mrs. Peregrine's uh, Home, Home for Peculiar, Peculiar Children yeah. that was, a good movie. was a, a, the book. Did you read the book? Fucking, have you read no. the book? No. <laughs> then there you go. Same, same. I liked it, and I haven't read it. That's yeah. why. And the, Oh, oh no, I'm going to know. I'm going to come up here because <laughs> Miss Peregrine's book. Peculiar Children. It was amazing. amazing. Yeah. And, and the movie was a and fucking and movie. Yes, and then Tim Burton comes in and shits all over it. And the movie is a preteen version of the X-Men. It is awful. They change up the main girl. They, uh, they, they just make it so fucking cheesy. And the book is dark. So this bullshit story that fucking <laughs> Tim Burton did. No, I, no. I don't know what year it came out, I remember, but it was shitty. Well, he messed up terrible. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. He it's did. True, yeah, he did. Tim Burton messed so, up a lot of shit post-Batman. So, yeah. Don't go see Miss Peregrine's, that's for sure. Fuck Dumbo up all the Sorry. way. Tim Burton <laughs> is, the real Tim Burton is what we got whenever we got Sleepy Hollow, whenever we get something that's specifically Tim Burton, like Edward Scissorhand. When Tim Burton's making his own shit, we get a masterpiece like Edward Scissorhand. Yeah, whenever Big he's Fish. Yeah, yeah, Big Fish. Whenever he's given something before that, oh, dude, we get Planet of the Apes. Yeah. We get Dumbo. We get the Wahlberg Planet of the Apes. Folks. Yeah. Not the James Franco reboot. Yeah. yeah. The Wahlberg one, nobody wants to talk about. No one wants to remember. Yeah. Like, the best thing about that was Rick Baker's makeup, which is fucking incredible. Yeah. We didn't need CGI back then with Rick Baker, but. That was one of the worst fucking movies I'd ever seen at the time when I saw it. I hated yeah, look, it so much. Looking back, it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah it's cringy. You like Planet of the Apes, didn't you? No. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Did not. Did yeah. not. Uh, one more uh, Monsters University. I thought we saw. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. That's yeah. so totally good. Totally redeem yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Really enjoyed that one. Yeah, it was good. 
So, well, following up in Monsters University, uh, I liked a movie called Monsters. Oh. I don't know if you might saw it. Uh-oh. Is this 2014? Is this the sci-fi movie? Or, yeah. Oh, 2013. Yeah. This is the sci-fi Desolate Island. Uh, they're in Mexico. Ah, uh, yes. That's and right. And they're trying to get over I thought this was earlier on in a decade, like 2010. Mm. Oh, dang. According to IMDb, it is all right, fair 2013. Enough. This is one so. of my brother's favorite movies of all time. I think it's super... I haven't watched it for that reason. Super good. Oh, what a, yeah, Aww. that's going to ruin it for me right there. <laughs> Listen, it's... It's n- it's Good. a movie with monsters in it, but the monsters aren't the main focus. It the focus is on the characters, and they're trying to get. Um, they're they're essentially this uh, journalist is paid to go. I th- believe it's his boss's daughter is stuck in, um, is in Mexico, and she's needing to get back to the states. And in order to go through it, they have to go through like the danger zone where all the monsters live, and it's almost like. Um, it's almost like Jaws in a way where, you know, Jaws, they give you the hint of the monsters and without actually showing it. And, uh, so it, it had a shoestring budget. It was like, uh, yeah, it was like a $1.5 million budget. And the guy that directed it, Gareth Edwards, went went on to do Godzilla, um, Rogue One he did as well. So wait, the guy that made Godzilla made Rogue One, th- directed mm. it. Oh, okay. Did he? Yes. Okay. Jesus Christ. That's so a good movie. yeah, it's a good movie, but um, but yeah, I thought the concept was really good because whenever you do get to see the full extent of the monsters at the end of the movie, it's so cool. And uh, are y'all looking it up right now? Is that what you're doing? Uh, so, I think. Anyways, I thought it was. I think it's super good. So it's. I watched it recently, and I still really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, like I said, you don't really get to see the monsters. You just see like little hints here and there. You know that they're there. You see a little bit of a of what's a hand or a foot or you know people are getting attacked and stuff. Yeah, but you don't sometimes see. Sometimes that's better though because yeah, a lot yeah. of times if you see the actual monster, it ruins it. Exactly, and it's not done in a, like a super um, like a super cheesy way yeah but it's not done in like a it, again it's not a monster movie it, it's a movie with monsters in it what uh monsters from what year again <laughs> 2013 uh, some people think it came out in 2010 but that's okay mm. uh this is one uh, of those weird no this is one of those weird movies that uh, actually if i remember movie. right halloween if, 2010 if i remember huh. correctly it didn't get Maybe no. a, 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 a wide a, release, a and wide release period. Anyway, oh no, um, no, it went. I think it went straight to video. Yes, and it didn't. It, it may have done so like three years after it was uh, originally released in the smaller circuit of cinemas, mm-hmm. and there just wasn't an audience for it, and so it, it got like re-released in uh, a more major distribution in 2013. But the only reason I remember this is because my brother, again, has been on my ass for not watching this movie since about 2010. <laughs> and I stray away from the movies that, unfortunately, a- and I'm starting to give in to him because he's he's got okay oh, taste. Yeah. But he... Um, Damn, he it, does say, it does say 2010 on Internet Movie Database. That's what okay. list was I going off of? Fuck, I, don't know. I had this damn movie in there. It's, oh, worth, it's, it's still worth talking yeah. about. Um, yeah. But yeah, I remember this being an early decade thing because it was the same year as Troll Hunter, or a year or two removed. And this is uh, m- my my brother recommended Troll Hunter too, and I just uh, <laughs> those two movies I haven't watched, and I, I will now because yeah. you guys signed off. On it. I like well, and I got I, Mi- I got Miguel to watch it, and he enjoyed it. I loved it. It was yeah, brilliantly done. If I can get Miguel, an actor. It's uh, not Scoot Maneri, is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I love him. Yeah. I saw a silhouette of the main actor on the poster. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that looks a lot like Scoot Maneri. It sure Halt is. Halt and Catch Fire fame and a bunch yeah. of other stuff, too. Batman v Superman. He's awesome. Man. Yep. So, it's a good movie. Um, another honorable mention is uh, The Conjuring, which we already talked about. And then my last one is Crazy Stupid Love. Um, this was like Ryan Gosling's big comeback. He hadn't been in a movie in a while. This was Steve Carell as like an older, attractive male. You know, he's <laughs> in the office, and this is like his first like big role outside of the office, besides Forty Year Old Virgin. So it was a fun movie. Good cast: Emma Stone, uh, Julianne Moore, um, 
oh who uh Kevin Bacon wasn't Ryan Gosling movie? in this? Yeah, hmm. yeah. So it was. It's a fun little movie. I think it's super sweet and adorable, and it just like all it it goes through all stages of love, like your first crush, whenever you're married, whenever like you're a cheating spouse, you know, finding new love and a new relationship and getting to know each other. So I think all those little aspects wrapped into one movie, and like all these characters and intermin- intermingling, if I can't say it, <laughs> <laughs> is really good. So nice. There goes all my honorable mentions. I have no honorable mentions for that year because the rest of the mainstream movies I thought were just kind of overrated. Blowhards, yeah. yeah they're working blowhards. It's like I, I liked The Wolf of Wall Street. I didn't even yeah. really fuck me in the ear over how God great it was. I'm so glad oh. nobody mentioned that. Oh, man. 2013? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And I remember... Like, wow. No, don't no take backs now. Because uh, no, no, no. that movie Listen, is so overrated. Okay, Thank Wolf you. of Wall Street is super overrated, but it did give us Margot Robbie. So uh, Yeah, that's true. So it was her breakout role. It was her breakout role, but that's the only that that's the only um, good thing that came about that movie. That yeah. was incredibly. I think overrated. over time, that pretentious. It's one of DiCaprio's worst worst movies over time. Yeah, I thought he was more obnoxious in that movie than anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and he had to be granted. Uh, and that was the 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 era and the aura of of what that movie was going for. But yeah, yeah it's still so that's weird. part of why I hate the movie so much is because <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is a this is a window into the people that basically fucked us in two thousand eight. Capitalism over. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the eighties, right? Um, this is the no. Uh, this is after he gets out of jail. What and year it's, did Wolf of Wall Street um, take, take place? Yeah, I think it was pretty much current day. What? Yeah. It was in the, right. it was it was, or it was I, or do I have I'm thinking my 80s. movies to have my movies. This yeah, is I'm early around. 90s. Early 90s. 90s. Okay. This was in the 90s. So yeah, this is the onset the same of thing. capitalistic greed. Well, not the onset, that was Reaganomics, but anyways, um, um same shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, same Different shit. Different decade. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I don't know. You were alive through Reaganomics. So I, I only have a window into the past, but uh, I've seen They Live. and uh, We know what that was yeah. about. Thank you, John Carpenter. Yeah, thanks, John Carpenter. for And, and that movie opened to uh, like 350 theaters and uh, made like 4,000 bucks in its opening week because it was blackballed. And, uh, oh, it, my God. Yeah, yeah that, that was, a, that was a, a, a commie propaganda movie when it mm-hmm. came out, basically. And then look how relevant it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty relevant Shit. because nothing's changed. Uh, I mean, all all of those talking points in that movie are still the same reasons. Ooh, yeah, we have the same problems. So, yep. so yeah. So no, no honorable mentions for me for that. That's year. why we don't like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, and, and that's a wrap. Okay. Sorry, that's because right. I was clicking. So I was like, "Fuck, we have to do it again." And the Hans Zimmer score can <laughs> kick in. <laughs> Yeah, um, you were saying a podcast about our favorite theaters? Well, yeah, because we've had, we've had a huge debate uh, with our group of friends about uh, about which theater. Oh, Alamo. Alamo versus totally AMC versus. Like your, studio? Depends on your mood. Depends on your life circumstances, too. Yeah. I, I've always been to Vout to study Moving Ground just because that's the first theater I started to go to when I was here in Dallas. But but lately, because of shit like that, yeah, I've become so particular about going to Alamo. Like, no, they're more expensive because of shit like that. Yes, well, I love it. What movie was it we saw? I think it was Us. And like there was there was a dude who had... I, I can hear you okay. Yeah. There was a, we were watching, I think it was Us. Can and you hear us? Sorry. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh, Ooh. there we go. That's better. Uh-huh. Okay. Now Whatever you do. Wait, you? Oh, no. There we go. Now oh, I now can't. I can't yeah, hear you. Yeah, he cut us all off. Yeah. Damn it. Oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's all right. Okay. I got it. Everybody. This is why we're t- I'm back. Is yeah. everybody good? Are we, are we back? What? You can't hear? I can hear everything. Oh. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. Let's leave it at that. So uh, you were seeing, uh, you were watching us. We were watching combo. us, and there was a couple behind us who wouldn't shut the fuck up. And then the yeah, dude next to us was just like, hey, hey. We're You're at the Alamo to... Draft House, bitch. Shut no, no, it, 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 it was studio. It was studio. Oh, okay. No, we, we saw studio us at didn't Alamo. give a fuck. Okay, which is the one we saw at, at Studio Movie Grill? And the dude next to us was like, "Hey, we're just trying to watch the fucking movie, boss." <laughs> <laughs> dude, was it? It, it might have been it. It might have been the first it. But yeah, the dude next to me was just like, <sighs> "We're just trying to watch the fucking movie, boss." Like, like it just. He just went off. And I, was I like, love that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. See, you don't have to worry about that at Alamo because all the hipsters who go there are willing to pay more. That's true. And it's like 17, 18 bucks a ticket, right? Yeah. Or well, not really. No, huh? not that much. <laughs> it's like 11. It's the food is where they get you. Well, then AMC is more expensive. I thought Alamo was the cream of the crop when it came to price uh, well, ticket prices. No, Alamo no, is 11. Um, AMC is like 15. 
AMC yeah, is yeah. expensive. That's nuts. You don't get shit. Fuck AMC. I mean, no. they barely yeah. started with the recliners. It's um. We at uh, we go to at Studio Movie Girl. It's like ten bucks, eleven dollars at the most. Well, it's nothing because we have Studio Movie Girl All Access. Yeah, we have All Access, so we use that. At least four movies a month. Yeah, you have to do it for four movies a month. I'm so still waiting for Alamo Season Pass. I need it. That know, that's what we want. Be at the end of the year, I know. So we'll have. Both. We're convert. No, we're gonna convert. I'm converting. <laughs> I've started yeah. going to see movies on my lunch breaks. How the hell? Well, he <laughs> watches them in twenty-minute increments. No, That's how I, he can do this. No, I get ninety-minute lunch breaks, and uh, I'll, I'll, you know, push make, it. I'll push it a little bit. I'll be like, I got a doctor's oh, appointment. An executive uh, lunch? No, not an executive. Holy <laughs> oh, shit! But I will. I'll say like, I I'll do it on purpose. <laughs> generally, I know we don't do it on purpose, Morgan. I swear, we just can't go to. Fox yeah, you guys take buttholes. the executive lunches. I get forty-five Sometimes. minutes, or I get bitched at if I go over forty-five oh, minutes. And you buttholes. Time They'll time go hour 10, hour 15, what the hour hell? 20. You suck. Listen, uh, it, it took them a long We couldn't find the waitress to bring us our oh, chair. You guys it's so so they disappear. Oh, okay. yeah. There's one specific right. one that does not ever forget about us. There's <laughs> the other one. Like the last time we went, I literally had to walk over to the to the the little checkout thing and I was like, can we please, like here's our credit card. Can right, we please. Can out? we, we're trying to leave? Yeah. I've like, been seeing matinees, and I, I was going to segue this to going <laughs> to going to see movies. Them? No, going. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm pretty close to doing that. There's just none in Frisco because they're you know yeah. Yeah, they're super ritzy. Yeah, they're, they're they're dollar they're theaters. Uh, yeah, you yeah. just thought I was at the doctor today. I really went to go see you know well, some <laughs> movie, whatever's in the theater. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Ready or not. Yeah, well, I go see it. movies by myself a lot more than I used to, but I've done this in the past. So yeah. I was going to ask you guys how you feel about I've watching n- movies by yourself. I've never oh. done that once in the theater. Never. Maggie oh. does it all the fucking time. I it's awesome, oh, isn't yeah, it, Maggie? I'm totally it's so, uh, it's, Okay, it's, yeah, no, I'm going to take You need to do it. Bring your you. spirulina. <laughs> spirulina. <laughs> Listen, um, listen. I tell Miguel because okay, I have uh, a I have a story. So uh, I go to the I go see movies by myself sometimes because Miguel doesn't want to go, and I don't want to force him to go on some of these. Why well, that and makes sense? That's nice. because. If oh, he's trust gonna me, you don't want to see uh, no, some of the I movies. Know. I'm sure see. She yeah, does. because I, you know, if he's not gonna enjoy them, I don't want to force him there because he's gonna ruin my experience. Because I'm gonna be really giddy about him. So uh, one of those movies that I told him to stay home for was The Hobbit, and he didn't stay home for it. And mm-hmm. you know what? He was miserable the whole time. Yeah, he what made me sucks. miserable. What try? But I, I even even with smoking something beforehand, it did not help. That movie was fall. Listen, <laughs> listen, I had plenty of friends that were there that they asked agreed. me to go. Even listen, go? no, they asked me. They were like, hey, do you want to go? And I'm like, well, Miguel and I already got tickets. Mm-hmm. And I knew you didn't want to go. After but that, you I, said I you didn't want yourself. me to. Yeah, but no. now, bitch, I go, I'll go tonight. I don't give a shit. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> right? Like, I know. It was a lot of fun. They should have 24-hour movie theaters. Oh, my God. They, they do? Where? Where? Not here. Not in the metro. Well, they're down off of 35 of Mockingbird. Not those kind oh. of movies. Oh. 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 No, no, no. You might oh, have yeah. the season Is there a reward that, club for that? Yeah. <laughs> do yeah. I get a free popcorn you every get, once in a while with the bottom cut out? You get, popcorn? You get free food. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, Do they yeah. have those here in the DFW? Yes. Yeah. Really? Because I always picture those adult in like movie uh, stores. Yeah. I didn't know stores. I thought the theaters. Yeah. They, well, they got small. Theaters I don't know about that, sir. I was about to say. I, does that? Let's I, let's turn to the expert on the subject. <laughs> oh, I do. Hey, look, I drive a little lift and I drop people. That off. makes sense. Okay. Doesn't Somebody sense. takes a lift to a porno theater. Oh, some, yeah. Hey, some people meet their next girlfriends like in a. But um. Hope you're listening. You. Hope you're listening there, buddy. No names mentioned. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, damn. I'll, I'll edit it out. No, don't edit no, it don't out. No, don't We There's haven't called out any names, so yeah, if you're listening, that, you know who you them. are. <laughs> we don't judge. We just laugh. It's true, <laughs> yeah. No, and we judge. Don't lie. A little bit. <laughs> I'm not well, going to judge you for you dating just a think stripper. of the premise, and it's like, there's no way you were going to change a tire. There's no way. Well, okay. I'll yeah. No, let's let's cut it off right there. All right, <laughs> but uh, it does make for an interesting movie, and I don't know if it would make my top list, and maybe an honorable mention. But guy meets girl, side of the road, Uber Lyft driver, um, and helps her out, and then it turns into a psycho romantic comedy because she ends up being uh, crazy not stripper. Yeah, not not based on actual events. Okay, not based on actual events. <laughs> no, but not at all. Makes not a hell, at all. Hell of a good movie. We just need like. 
We just need a real life representation of it to pull from and sort of script this out. If only, yeah. Dang. <laughs> so I'm